Will the March 19, 2014 meeting of the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission please come to order? Thank you all for your attendance this evening. For the benefit of those present who may not have participated in a PNZ Commission meeting, I'll, I will review our public hearing procedure, which is as follows. We will read the legal notice for the public hearing portion of this meeting as published in the local newspaper. The applicants will then be invited to come forward and present their case, explaining to the Commission and the public what is specifically being requested of the subject property. Written comments from town agencies pertaining to the application will then be read into the record if the Commission has received any. The commissioners will then ask their clarifying questions and then the public will be invited to ask any questions they have about the application. I will then ask those in attendance who support the application to please come forward and make their statement. And then I will ask those in attendance who oppose the application to please come forward and make their statements regarding the application. As this is a public hearing, it will be necessary for those coming forward to either ask questions or to speak for or against any application to please identify themselves and state their name and address for the record prior to proceeding. At the conclusion of all statements from the public and the applicants, I will close the public hearing on each application. The applicant and the public are then free to leave or remain for the balance of the public hearings and the regular meeting at which time the Commission will discuss each application and under consideration and try to reach a decision. Each applicant will be notified in writing as to the decisions of this Commission. The applicant and or any aggrieved party with legal standing will have the right to appeal this decision to Superior Court within the statutory time frame if they so desire. All decisions reached at this meeting will be available to the public the next day by either visiting or calling the Planning and Zoning Office after 9.30 a.m. Seated this evening, the following bill for Planning and Zoning Commissioners, <clears throat> uh, David Grigsby, Walter Corbier, Amre Bauer, Tom Koss, Frank DeAndrea, Josh Hirschman, uh, Richard Meyer, town, uh, staff present this evening, George Crow, Town Planner. Our recording secretary this evening is Katie, and the videographer is Shannon Gale. Will the secretary please read the legal notice? Legal Notice, Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission. Notice is hereby given that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on March 19, 2014 at 7.30 p.m. at the Nathaniel B. Green Community Center, Minunkatuck Room, 2nd Floor, 32 Church Street, Guilford, Connecticut, for the following purposes. Number one, Ayele, Maria and Girma, 42 Boston Post Road, Map 43, Lot 3, Zone R-3. Special permit for uh, accessory apartment in a detached structure, section 237-19. Number two, miscellaneous amendments, section 273-2, section 273-19A, section 273-19B, section 273-19B8, section 273-19B11, section 273-1093, section 273-36A. Number three, Weissman, Mara, 117 Andrews Road, Map 12, Lot 76B, Zone R5, Special Permit for Guest Accommodation in an Accessory Structure, Section 273-36, and Use of Cottage as Temporary Seasonal Residence During Home c Construction. Number four, Dushkin, Maria, 19 Fair Street, Map 39, Lot 30, Zone R-1, Special Permit for a Meditation Group in Existing Building, Table 4, Line 17. Copies of these applications are available for inspection in the Office of the Planning and Zoning Commission, Town Hall South, 50 Boston Street, Guilford, Connecticut, at this hearing persons may attend and be heard and written communications will be received. Dated at Guilford, Connecticut, this 26th day of February 2014, Ray Bauer, Chairman. All right. Thank you very much, Walter. Uh, first mm -hmm. item on the agenda is 42 Boston Post Road. This is a special permit mm -hmm. for an accessory apartment in a detached structure. Sir. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, my name is David Jones. I'm, I'm acting as the applicant. Uh, speaking for my good friend and good neighbor, uh, lives next door to me, uh, Gamma Ayel, and his wife, Marie. Uh, we're looking to get uh, put forward an application for permission to use the detached building, which has been on the property for, well, at least uh, 30 years. Uh, I've been living next door before uh, my current uh, neighbor moved in for 25. It was an old building when I showed up. Um, the, uh, what we'd like to be doing is using that as, a, as a, a, an accessory apartment and be able to rent it out. It, uh, the place has public water. Recently, Guillermo, the owner, has been doing a lot of work. Well, as long as he's been there, he's been a great neighbor, always improving his property. But he has gone ahead, and, and I put into the uh, information that I put in, 
has done expansion on the, the septic system there to make sure that everything was working properly there. Um, would like to be able to use this for a rental for other people. Uh, he does live in the house. Uh, we, we share stories over our fence all the time. Uh, the, the building has had a number of different uses over the 25 years I have been there, and uh, John Quirk was an owner before that. Um, I, as I say, I'm very excited that Garamet has been there instead. Um, it does fit the, from, from my understanding, I think it fits the specification. The size of the building is um, under the thousand feet that is there. Um, it is a place that has actually two ways in and out of it as a detached building, and so it is a safe place. Um, and, and I think that the rest of it, maybe I did send them on some photos if anyone had a chance to search. We recognize the property because everyone recognizes us who live right there on the Boston Post Road. All right. Uh, we did receive a letter from Dennis Johnson, Director of Health, dated March 19th, regarding this application. Sufficient capacity exists in the applicant's current septic system to accommodate the additional wastewater use from the proposed accessory apartment. It is recommended that the applicant's proposed use be permitted. Uh, George, this, the checklist was fine. Everything. You have a copy of that, yep. right? Uh, right. Reggie completed that. It complies with all the requirements. Okay. So, uh, with regard to the drawings, no s issues with setbacks or no. variance requirements? No, it meets all those requirements. Okay. Questions from the Commission? Before the septic increase, was um, was there already adequate septic for this additional accessory department? Do you know? That's beyond the scope of my understanding. Yeah. I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. I didn't, yeah, I didn't necessarily expect mm -hmm. you. I was just wondering. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from the commission at this time? Uh, anybody in the public? How about the uh, just I'm sorry, Tom, just go back, uh, driveway access? The driveway. I, I don't. We don't have a. We don't have a, a map of, of the actual. <laughs> Site. We just have a picture of the building. How does one get from the? Is it is the driveway off Boston Post and Post Road? The driveway is off of the Boston Post Road. Goes in between the primary structure and the uh, accessory building, which yep. is actually closer to to where I am. I thought I had that in here, but uh, yes. and so yes, it does come out. And there's okay. actually on the yeah. the sanitation as built. I want to see that might actually be. A direct answer to your question there. That's uh, right. This is Boston Post Road. Uh, it comes in between. There's parking behind the house, behind the accessory building. Um, plenty of parking for for anyone that needs to be there. Certainly more than uh, what we call for. In the okay. That was it. All right. Any questions from the public? Is there anybody in the public who wants to speak in favor of the application? Is there anybody who wishes to speak against the application? Are there any other questions from the public or from anybody on the commission? Okay, hearing none, I'll close the public hearing on this matter and we will move forward to the Weissman application, 117 Andrews Road, special permit for a guest accommodation and an accessory uh, structure and use of a cottage as a temporary seasonal residence during home construction. Good evening, uh, thank you. My name is John Bennett. This is Mayor Weissman right here, who has uh, just acquired this property in December. Um, and uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the property at 117 Andrews Road, but it uh, has a single family for contemporary house up on the hill, and then down below is a summer cottage, seasonal cottage, which has been there since about 1940. Um, and that's what we're here to talk about tonight. And Mr. Chairman, I don't know what's the appropriate moment to ask for this, but I did ask for um, a waiver of uh, requirements of special exception permit, um, uh, most of them, because we're not, all we're doing is essentially rehabilitating existing structures. There aren't any, there's any site work to speak of, or, or any. Um, and there, it's paint and polish and new windows and that sort of thing. And then a use within the existing structure. Okay. So, so we'll uh, just go through it it's uh, I mean technically it's a special permit right George and that's asking for a waiver of the uh, professionally prepared site plan right okay mm -hmm. well uh, why don't we do that we'll show uh, that you filed a motion to um, have us waive the A2's right. professional survey and then we'll take that up 
uh, as part of the consideration, and if you know when we go through this, it looks like we don't really need it, then we'll we'll go ahead and probably go ahead. So why don't you? In that light, there is an A2 survey. It's just not current, current. But, but it shows the existing structures and. Uh, okay, I mean we're just more concerned about making sure we don't go into a setback or some that. kind of issue like that. And, and this is an existing structure it has been, as I said, since 1940, and as you can see. There, the setback is actually on or on okay. this. So you know, it's, it's this not. Is, this is the cottage. This is right. the cottage, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Um, very well. We have uh, an accessory cottage. It has been there since 1940, according to your assessor's records. And uh, I have brought with me for your review, and I don't know how many copies you want me to give you, but I have the current assessor's record showing the uh, layout of the structure. It is the second structure at the bottom of the page. It has exact, that's the current footprint. I don't know how many of these you wish to have. But I have share one here, so that's okay. okay. Right. Which one's? This it's the lower of the two uh, footprints you see there. They are not to the same scale, so please understand that it's a very small cottage. That's, that's the cottage, right? That's like that. Exactly. Okay. Uh, Actually, it's like this. This is the, uh, like that's that little knob there, oh, yep. and that's the porch there. All right. Um, I also asked for apparently the oldest available um, assessor's card in 1985. So I brought a copy, which was given to me or obtained from your assessor of the 1985 um, uh, assessor's uh, card. Why don't you take that? We'll share this one. Um, and again, this is a compendium of both structures. And if you go to the uh, fourth and fifth pages, you will see the assessor's card with respect to the cottage and then the floor plan of the cottage. And it has exactly the same dimensions as it has today. Okay. Okay. How many square feet are in the cottage? About 1,320 square feet. Did they get a Variants? They're not applying for accessory apartment. What are they applying? This is a uh, guest accessory building as human habitation. It's not a separate apartment. It's not. Let me be very clear, and I think I've stated this in the application. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to show you what was there and what's there now. Yeah. And as we've said in our statement of use, this is not going to be used as a rental apartment uh, at all. It will only be used by the Wisemans and their family. Um, kitchen. Well, uh, we're asking for, uh, there is a kitchen, always has been a kitchen. The pictures that you have there in front of you actually uh, show you the refrigerator. This was after the work had started. If you look at the bottom center photographs, you'll see a large yellow box. That's the refrigerator. Huh. In, in our package is a, uh, that we gave you is the existing floor plan. And as you will, if you look at that, you will see that there's a full kitchen in there with an oven, stove, um, you know, range, a hot water heater, and uh, a refrigerator, sink, cabinetry, so forth. Was any of this grandfathered in George before zoning? I'm just wondering if, uh, I'm, I don't know how old the kitchen part of this. Right. Do you have any idea how old the kitchen is? Is it pre? Is it predate zoning? I don't. Uh, the best I can do is uh, to tell you that it has been there for a long time, judging by the vintage of the range that I saw in there. Um, but I, I don't know how long it's been there. The other problem is that your assessor's records don't list either now or then. Uh, list kitchens. Okay. Uh, they don't uh, give you the kitchen equipment and so forth. Yeah, I, I always thought that the difference between an, an accessory apartment and the human habitation, studio, office, etc., was the kitchen. You got correct. a bathroom, but you wouldn't have cooking facilities. That's correct. So just coming here and saying, we swear to God, this isn't an accessory apartment, even though it has a kitchen. <coughs> they're not applying for, they, they're not applying for Accessory apartment special permit. Right. Which, as you know, the maximum size is 1,000 square thousand. feet. Right. But it sure sounds, I mean, it, it has a bathroom. Two. Two. 
meets all of the criteria for an accessory apartment, yes. Right, except, except for the 1,000 square feet. Right. Except the size is larger. It, right, and plus you're not mm -hmm. in a position where you're going to be able to rent <coughs> this out. I mean, this has to just be used by the family since you're not here for an accessory They're apartment. They're indicating that... And that's our indication. Right. That's our representation. Right. Okay. That it's not... And the enforcement comes from somebody saying those don't look like relatives? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that would be the case whether it was a thousand square feet or not. Um, right. but our representation to you and our, our commitment is that this is not going to be rental property. And has not, I might add, at least to our knowledge, when the DuPont family owned the property, it was used by members of the DuPont family. And I will get into some of that in more detail as we go along here. But um, in any event, what I have shown you in the exhibit so far is the pre-existing nature of the layout of the structure. It's a four bedroom, two full baths, kitchen, fireplace, living room, and an enclosed porch area. Um, we propose, as you will see in the floor plans that we've given you, uh, to uh, renovate this place. And our preference would be to immediately for the near term to use it as the principal residence on the property on a temporary basis, seasonal, non-rental. And I put that in our statement of use. And the reason is that the main house on the property is going to be substantially renovated, might be taken down and rebuilt. <coughs> um, it's, a, it's an interesting but not very serviceable contemporary house. Uh, which was built in approximately 1985, as the assessor's right to show you. And so, my, uh, Ms. Weissman would like to use the cottage as the principal residence. You can't have two principal residences on a piece of property. So we're asking, as part of the special exception, to be able to use the cottage uh, and not the main house until CO issues for the main house, at which point it would revert to being this guest accommodation. This is another reason that we're looking for uh, to continue and to carry on with the cooking facilities. In the package that I've given you, uh, I would note, and I've included the minutes from the March 26, 1979 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, at which exactly this was done by your predecessor commission uh, with respect to the construction of the existing house. The uh, house and lot, um, well, let me strike that. The lot was subdivided from a larger piece of property in about 1980, and that was part of the approval. Was the cottage could be used on a temporary basis for the family while the main house was being constructed. And that is a portion of the application that we have here tonight before you because, again, we don't want to be caught up you having two principal dwellings. The big house, if you will, will not be used, will not be occupied. It's in the process of, uh, the design process is uh, well on its way, and we expect to be in the process of getting building permits for that um, to start. And it will not be occupied uh, during this interim period. Um, another aspect of this application was that if you look at the original floor plan, the pre-existing floor plan, you'll also see there is a sun <coughs> referred to as an enclosed sun porch. Now, uh, we want to take down the wall to make the room behind useful, and we've given you a, a proposed plan for that. Initially, we were uh, concerned, uh, and Dennis Johnson was concerned, that the septic <coughs> serving this property wouldn't allow that, the incorporation of that additional square footage into living space. Keeping in mind, it's an entirely enclosed porch with half walls and windows and everything. But that incorporation would be a violation of the health code. Uh, we have had the property tested, and you should have in your file. In yes, your we do. Uh, if I can, let me just read it into the record now so we can just move forward with your presentation. Uh, we have a letter from Dennis Johnson dated the 19th of March. Soil testing conducted on the applicant's lot revealed suitable conditions and adequate area for the installation of a septic system to serve the seasonal cottage. The owner has obtained a sanitary permit 
to install a replacement septic system prior to seasonal occupancy of the cottage. No additional bedrooms are being proposed for the cottage. It is recommended that the applicant's proposed use be permitted. Please Thank continue. You. Thank you very much. Um, so those are, shall I say, <coughs> the three aspects of this. We're looking for this to be an accessory to uh, ultimately to the main house, temporarily to be the primary dwelling while the main, until the main house gets its CO. We want to take down that interior wall, which seems not to be a problem from a health code perspective now. And uh, we want to be able to have cooking facilities as there have been right along in the property. So um, you think that most likely the cooking facilities were substantially similar in 1940 as well as in 1985? Well, the cottage has been there for, uh, I, I, the answer is I don't know, we don't right. know. What we do know is what was there I have a letter from, uh, which I'll give you also, from Mr. Uh, Piscatelli, who was a uh, uh, broker involved in the uh, sale of the property, who can, who describes the fact that these things were there. Um, as I say, the existing floor plan that you have shows the facilities in place. I myself saw them all there. It was. You know, they had been the soap had been moved away from the wall, but the refrigerator is in the picture that you see there in the location where it shows on the original part of the existing. <coughs> you have one of these in the file, right, for the record already, or do we need no, to? No. Okay, why don't we add this one to make it part of the record? Thing. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the only other thing that I will say to you is in an effort to, I hope, give some understanding of how this was used. And again, I don't know how far back this goes. But here is a uh, screenshot of the Google Street View of the house. And sticking out of the window, you will see there an air conditioner, uh, as well as there being a grill there. This is another screenshot from down the street showing that there is a television antenna on top of the chimney. And though it is hard to see, if you look at a slightly farther shot, you'll see beach chairs or, or wooden chairs out in front of the house toward the water. I can't tell you that it was this year, it was certainly before now, um, but it clearly somebody was using it. Mr. Piscatelli's letter says that he had seen it being used and occupied by the grandson of DuPont, and that Mrs. DuPont had used it on a regular basis as well. So uh, that's our pitch. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. I think we've established that this is all pre-existing, at least in terms of its shape. I wish I could show you in its number of rooms, and it's, it is a four-bedroom, two-bathroom house. We are going to improve the septic system. Uh, we're asking for something which has been considered and done before, and uh, we think we have the all pre-existing conditions that are, are appropriate. Okay. So we'll ask for uh, questions from the commission? Um, I think, I, I think I've located your floor plan before and after, I think. This is the pre-existing, correct. Okay. okay, so that's the wall you're taking out. That's the wall we'd like to take and out. you're making that a living room with bookshelves, booksh right. bench, four-foot diameter table. Is that a fireplace? The fireplace is always in there. You know, I'm, I'm with you there. Okay. Uh, opening, you're adding <coughs> a semi closed opening, I gather, and you're totally renovating the kitchen, it looks like. Correct. You're moving all kinds of stuff around, and then it's a four bedroom, that looks like it's getting closets, <coughs> and that bedroom's losing a closet. Um, and am I that's, following that's, that's, a, that's a fair, a fair description. Okay. The, um, and you'll see, for example, there's the refrigerator that you saw in that picture. You don't see the stove range because it's behind the right. chimney sure, and fine. I wasn't smart enough to take pictures at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and this proposes uh, putting uh, one in, mm -hmm. uh, a stove again, but on this wall. The other thing I'll tell you is that when uh, the Wiseman's uh, looked at this place, there was a large leather couch on the sun porch here. So all I can tell you is that it was being used as sort of occupied space. Um, so I don't, I don't really think we're changing much because it's all going to be internal. The windows are going to be the same, the doors are the same, we're doing trims and so forth. 
I, I go back to usually in my mind the cutoff is always when somebody says this is going to be an apartment. We say no, there are no kitchen facilities. No. How? It's cooking, <coughs> cooking, cooking, not kitchen. kitchen. You're right. The uh, in order so, for somebody to create an accessory apartment in a detached building, right? Uh, the maximum size is a thousand square feet. Right. And a, a, Accessory apartment is defined as having a living area, a kitchen, and an outside entrance, right. separate from the principal structure. Right. However, this family is not, a, they're not applying for accessory apartment. They're I, applying I to, that. to use this, to renovate and use this building as a guest cottage. Right. Uh, and that, I guess the claim is that the kitchen is there and it's not conforming with respect to the use, namely guest cottage. And that they're so. Uh, they're okay, sort of you just said something I didn't hear before. The kitchen, in fact, is not a conforming. We would not normally. If somebody walked in and said, "I swear to God, I'm not going to rent it," you wouldn't have. Somebody. If somebody we was wouldn't. creating a guest cottage or an office in a detached mm -hmm. building, they would not. We would not allow. allow the fact that this is a kitchen. effectively a pre-existing kitchen. I think that's the argument that you'd have to make. <laughs> right. Well, that's why I asked. Yes. We don't know if it predates the zone. Predates the zone. But Okay. We think it does. All right. I, I just I like the next owner who yeah. buys this property and says, "Think of think of how I'll offset my mortgage by renting out this cottage. How are we going to control?" As we've had people come here and say, "How do I know that they're not going to be renting out the?" Well, this will be a special permit, which will be filed on the land records, mm -hmm. and presumably the, you would you could put as it's in the application that they right. don't intend to do that. You could also include that as conditions, which would be listed on the special permit. Repeat that same language, really. Right. But so really, it would be up to the neighbors to make the right. objective observation. Those right. are yes. those are relatives. Those well, are well. The other a lot of other the other a lot of ways. the other sort of quirky thing about all of this is that with respect to guest cottages, there's no prohibition against renting a guest cottage. Um, Notwithstanding the fact it's called a guest, you just have to, paying. You just have to come into your house and cook. Right. Or they can't. Take they're out. not supposed to have a kitchen. Correct. Right. So you can create a guest cottage. Pursuant to our regulations, as long mm -hmm. as you don't put a kitchen in, whatever kitchen means, and rent it, in theory, and be legal. But their intention is not to okay. rent it at all. And so, they're and they're we understand that as a condition, and we understand the So, okay. I mean, so in terms of the, go so ahead, in terms go of the ahead. history of this, this, this secondary building that's on, mm -hmm. we, we don't know when the building was built. 1940, mm -hmm. according to the assessment record. Mm -hmm. So it was a cottage. It was a summer cottage. You got to believe it had a kitchen in it when, in it, was, when it was built. Yes, I, I mean I just can't imagine somebody building a summer cottage that didn't have a kitchen. We, we really have to infer that there were already some kind of cooking facilities so, in it. Yeah. So 1940 is a long time ago. A long time ago. Predates Four zoning. Long time before zoning. Cases yep. of that well, related to zoning. I mean, no one's provided any evidence that there was a kitchen then, but. If you, you just have to make it if, if it's at all useful, and it may not be, but if the pre-existing pre-existing subdivision in 1980, um, there's a house on the hill above the main house that's going to be taken down, um, and there were two cottages. Uh, there was a cottage up next to the main house up on the top of the hill, and this cottage. And when the subdivision was done, this cottage stayed on the lower piece. If I put it that way. Um, so it's been around for a long time. It's certainly pre I mean, certainly since 1940, and it is set up as a house. I mean, it, it, you know, I say that as you know, it has a fireplace, has an inter interior wall. It's not as if it, you know, had a barn door on the end and was only used to store canoes. Mm -hmm. it, it had electricity, it has plumbing, very old electricity, uh, like that, which is <coughs> part of the building permit we got is to replace that, replace the cabinets, replace. Okay. And it's not, it is not, uh, the walls are not insulated. We did find some insulation in the ceiling or in the roof and the upper portion, but not, uh, you know, we're not putting a heating plant in this one. Any other questions from the commission? Yeah, you're not going to have heating in this structure? No. As a fireplace. So it couldn't be used during the winter then? And that's our, and, and that's what we've said. It's seasonal only and non rental Questions from the public? Is there anybody <coughs> wishing to speak in favor of the application? Is, sir? Yes. Um, 
Good evening. My name is Bill Mooney. I represent Mueller and Richard Weissman as the um, buyer's agent for the sale. And I'm here this evening just to state what was in the house when they purchased it. Um, um, the beach house, which was seasonal, had a working kitchen, refrigerator, sink, stove oven, and it, also in the kitchen there was a, a hot water heater. Um, two bathrooms seemed to be winterized. Uh, the toilets of the and um, the furniture in the house included beds, the couch that they stayed at that was in the uh, porch. Um, and again, my conversation with the listing agent, Joe Piscatelli, um, was that the home um, had been recently used by the family seasonally only and on a regular basis. Um, in addition to that, um, the, is my understanding, with talking to Joe, that this house had been used um, as temporary residence for the past owners while they built back the current house that's on 117 acres. On that. Right. That seems to be borne out by the record of uh, 1979 planning and zoning meeting. Sort of by right activity, if somebody has a building permit to build a house, they can have a trailer, for example, and stay and live in the trailer. If they have some kind of accessory building, I don't remember any specific circumstances, but they can live in it while they have, as long as they have a building permit for the main, for the main house. Okay. Anything else you'd like to, to say about this? Item? Okay. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Is there anybody? Oh, sir. Hi, my name is Leo Petra. I'm the resident of Road, um, joining a piece of property, so one piece of property away uh, is a uh, uh, boat house that the uh, association owns. I'd like to speak in favor of this. Uh, I think the application is very well worded and it respects the planning and zoning rules and regulations, and, and uh, Weissmans are going out of their way to try to respect the um, PNC regulations to the best of their ability. Um, the fact that they're going to be investing a um, fair amount of uh, dollars in improving the property is going to be a big plus for the neighborhood. It's been a deteriorating little structure over the years. And I have been um, in that area for 25 years. I have seen people living in that facility, summer use only. And I think that if uh, they abide by the <coughs> special uh, exceptions, uh, that uh, they be uh, <coughs> good neighbors to all of us. All right. Thank you for your information. Yep. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone who wishes to speak against the application? Okay, uh, sir. I'm not necessarily against the application, but I'd like I have a statement I'd like to share. Sure. Uh, name and address, please, sir. My name is Doug Baldwin. I live at 124 Andrews Road. Thank you. I'm a uh, budding property owner. Can I spell? No, just kind of well, Ann, show me where you are. Oh, sure. If you can. Uh, yeah. Uh, can I do that? No, I'm yeah. not I'm sure where we are. Here's the cottage. That's the cottage. Yeah. That's uh, the cottage. Yeah. And this is our house. Okay. Up here. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, I brought copies of my statement in case I get too garbled up. And thanks. I also brought uh, copies of a memo that um, I think you all received from Reggie. Um, but it, it's, it's, it pertains to what I have to share. Um, before I get into my little statement, I just want to give an introduction of how I got here. I lived right across the street, and I noticed construction going on on the cottage. I knew that it had just been purchased, and I was surprised to see construction going on, and so much construction, uh, and not happening, and me not being aware of the permit, and not seeing any CAM applications. So I went down to town hall, and I spoke with Reggie, I spoke with Reggie Reed, who's not here tonight, um, and um, I said that I thought that there had been some restrictions on the cottage uh, when 
the DuPonts had uh, gone for their uh, application for splitting off the lot from the big piece that they had before. And Reggie said she'd look into it. And before I got home, my phone was ringing, and she said she had found it. And um, that was on February the 6th. And I believe a permit had been applied for and uh, issued at that time. Um, and uh, it, so Reggie sent the memo on February 6th. Subsequent to that, uh, the, um, the Weissmans modified their application uh, for basically um, what they're saying is, is just repairing the existing structure. And I think that um, uh, the new permit is on the 11th. Um, I still dispute the appropriateness of that permit, uh, but I haven't done, I know this isn't the proper forum for that. That would be a Board of Appeals. Uh, I'm waiting to see how this uh, commission uh, responds to that permit. So, my little statement. Uh, to properly consider the application for special permit, it is important to understand the history of the original resubdivision approval of number 117. Attorney Bennett has included a copy of minutes from March 26, 1979 in the planning and zoning um, of the planning and zoning meeting. Those minutes do not record the deleted condition that's in Reggie's memo. The deleted condition on the original approval of that lot read, the cottage on lot two shall either be moved, converted to the year-round residence, demolished, or converted to an auxiliary type structure as permitted under zoning regulations. It is clear the commission in 1979 intended to place restrictions on the existing cottage as a condition of allowing the formation of the lot. At issuance of certificate of occupancy, the previous owners needed to seek a per special permit, which was never done. The argument could be made the structure should not be allowed to exist but certainly it is not a habitable structure. No septic work has been done since the 1950s. Attorney Bennett states, has been used as a residence. That's true, but that does not make it legal or permitted. The same argument holds for, true for the kitchen. And I can swear that the kitchen has been there since 1940. Probably the 1940 refrigerator is still there. So, there's no question that it's always had a kitchen, but my question is, was it <coughs> supposed to be used or not? The existing cottage is a non-conforming structure. By size, location, 10 feet from high water. Section 2312 of your regulations, as you well know, says it's the intent of these regulations that non-conformities are not to be expanded and that they are to be reduced as quickly as fair interest permits. In conclusion, Attorney Bennett implies that the current application is essentially the same as the request made by the previous owners. <coughs> I would argue that it is clearly was not the intent of the 1979 commission to have the cottage used as a habitable structure after construction of the main house. Thus, it is, if, thus is a, if a favorable decision is to be considered for the special permission, permit, the condition, commission, <coughs> sorry, the Commission needs to look intently at the overall development of number 117. How can the impact on the lot and neighboring properties be gauged without plans for the primary residence? Is there enough room to install two fully compliant septic systems with required reserve areas? Finally, will the expansion of nonconformity impair the ability to follow the guidelines for low impact development? Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. Sir, <coughs> um, taking, taking, taking all of this as, as true, would you mind connecting it to the, um, 
to any kind of nuisance or other negative externality that it might impose upon upon your property or other nearby neighbors. Um, based nuisance? On the, yeah, nuisance or um, or any other kind of problem. No, I don't see it as any as a nuisance. Um, as I say, it stated, my, my, my direct uh, um, uh, view of this special permit is not necessarily negative or positive. <coughs> my, my concerns are that it's being, uh, that, that the, the use of the cottage is being, uh, uh, being uh, portrayed as an existing condition. And my point is, it's an existing condition that was never supposed to be allowed after the uh, DuPonts uh, completed building their structure in whenever it was, 82 or something like that. And you're concerned prospectively that it's possible that the larger residences, septic, um, will will really be too crowded or will be not really in compliance. Have you, visited, have you been out to the site? I believe that maybe I you didn't have, have time. But it's it's right on the water. It's a steep slope. Uh, getting two think compliance septic systems on there is going to have a huge impact on that property and all all the neighborhood. But this um, the septic work that they're proposing this evening, you think, does meet all those? I don't. I have no idea what they're proposing. To do. The letter from uh, uh, the sanitarium doesn't explain to me what what's going to be involved right. in putting that system in. So uh, let me just ask, so then what would be the outcome you would like to see? If <clears throat> the outcome that I would like to see is uh, to make sure that the development of that property is done uh, uh, with, with uh, adherence to uh, uh, the guidelines of this committee. Low, um, the gentleman over there was <coughs> laughing when I said low impact development. I guess that's not something that's... Uh, I don't know what was funny about that, but uh, this is a, a pretty sensitive area. Uh, this is uh, uh, in the view shed of Long Island Sound. Uh, so uh, I, I think it's a property that needs to be highly respected. And, and it seems that this request is, um, but I have personally no problems at all with the, the cottage being used as a summer residence the way it's always been. But it seems as if it is a snowball that's beginning to roll to to bend the rules around this property in any way, shape, or fashion to allow it to be uh, developed in a very intense manner. Okay, can I ask you a question? Sure. How, how is what they're asking for different than what's there now? Like you just said, that this is existing and it's been used as a summer residence. What are they asking for that's different? Uh, they're not asking for anything different, I don't think, other than this is, it, this is a property that's been very, very rarely used. The, the DuPonts would use it, uh, I, don't, I don't know, but uh, a month out of the year type of thing. I don't think I'm exaggerating, but I certainly didn't sit there and gauge their use of it. Uh, and the people before that used it a month every three years. They never used it. Um, so to the, the, the process of the permit going through, no CAM, no, no regulations on it, now it's going to become a, a residence. It's intensifying the use of that property without it, without it uh, following the proper channels of going through town. That's all, it's being, it's, it's being very de intensely developed. We, we don't know what their plans are for the other house, so you're going to permit an auxiliary structure to expand its use, put in a new septic, and then they're going to come back and say, well, now with the new primary structure, we have to do this and we have to do that because this has already been done. Um, I, I just, I don't see that there's a coordinated um, um, method of control of this, of the development here. And I don't, I, I really don't, want to be a pain in the neck to my new neighbor, but unfortunately, I don't see any anybody holding the reins, so it's me. George, uh, with CAM, when the primary, when the current primary residence, the larger structure, is renovated, uh, will that trigger a CAM? 
application. And so what you mean about renovate it? Um, yes. I uh, yeah. I'm not. I'm not clear whether it's within 100 feet of the water, the high water. Assuming that it is, then any expansion of it or any site improvements would require camp. Just remodeling the existing house would not require camp. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just have one question. So you brought up um, 3B from the 1979 minutes. And, and not that it's uh, any fault of the current owners, but are you sort of looking for enforcement of 3B that the cottage on the lot shall either be moved, converted to year-round residence, demolished, or converted to an auxiliary type structure as permitted under the zoning? Am I? Yeah. That, yeah. Yep. I mean, that's been my understanding that that's w what should have happened, but just never happened because the DuPonts were there. So I wouldn't see why that wouldn't happen now. What does that mean? Do not record the deleted condition. In your letter, you said the minutes do not record the deleted condition 3B. Right. What do you mean? What does that mean? The minutes that are in the application. Right. Oh. Don't well, include the, the, the part correct. that you're reading on Reggie's. Well, but did the minutes of that meeting indicate that the commission deleted 3B? They, may I? Yes. The minutes just well, show we, what. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. The, the minutes of the original meeting show 3B, and then these minutes show the deletion of 3B. And Reggie's memo, I, I could have, I didn't put it in because I knew you had Reggie's memo has the 3B provision there. All right. But that has been, that was rescinded. Okay, well that's what my question is. So the 1979 <coughs> meeting minutes do indicate that 3B was rescinded. Yeah, and those you have. That is okay. that is what okay. that okay. says. So then why are you, are you just saying that the, they were not included in this application, the fact that they were? Oh, I didn't, saying, I, I'm sorry. Okay. I misunderstood yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, so. No, so I, 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 was, <coughs> I, I was thinking whatever the number is, the one that's there. I, I don't, I mean, that's 3B is the one that was deleted? Yes. I'm sorry. 3B is. I, I think what has not ever been enforced is, is it 4, the one that's the adopted condition? Is that the proper number? It is uh, not conforming to have two houses on one lot and enlarging no. enlargement of the cottage floor. Well, it said they added a condition 4, which read as follows, that the cottage existing on lot number 2 may be used as a summer residence during right. the construction of the Euron residence, the cottage to revert to an auxiliary use upon receipt of a CO for the year-round residence, which sort of sounds like what they're asking us to do again right now. So I'm not sure what you're... They, they are asking to do it again, but mm -hmm. what I'm suggesting, they're basing most of their requests on the fact that, that it was an existing summer cottage, and what I'm claiming, trying to point out or what I understand, is to me condition four states that if the if the um, Duponts, the previous owners, had wanted to use it as a summer cottage, they would have needed to come back for a special permit when they receive their certificate of occupancy. Otherwise, why would it, condition four say revert to auxiliary use? So, so then the regulations have changed since then. Prior to <coughs> Certainly 1979, 1980, when we did a comprehensive rewrite of the zoning regulations, there was no provision for having habitable space in a detached building, like an office, a guest house, a studio, whatever. There was a provision sometime around that date for allowing <coughs> accessory buildings to be used as habitable space. And at the same time, there were there was a provision in the regulations added to allow accessory buildings, detached accessory buildings, to be converted to apartments. So somewhere in that period of time, the commission decided that it was a good idea to encourage the reuse of some of these accessory buildings. Right. So that's but why I, I think that for I, my interpretation, and nobody cares about it, of the of the '79 approval <coughs> is that they were they were. If, if you take 3B that was deleted, where they're saying, get rid of it, demolish it, whatever else, and then they substitute this one, but the last word is revert to auxiliary structure, habitation was not what that committee had, commission had in mind. 
But then is this now the application before us, what the committee had in mind by them having to come to planning and zoning and ask for it to be? So these folks are coming and saying, we want, why are they here if it's a summer cottage? Well, just use it as a summer cottage. <laughs> so, and they're trying to say that it's been used as a summer cottage. It has been, but not legally. That's my point. That's all. Okay. All right, and I, I and I'm sure that they thought it was that it's I, and I have you know that it's a but I think that just allowing them to move forward is going to not respect the intent of the 79 commission and of trying to restrict the intensity of development on that piece of property. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against the application? Yeah, sir. Matt Tannio, 44 Harborview Road in Guilford. Um, I'm just confused as to why we're here. Come on. Uh, Sir, could you come on up if, if you would? Sure. Just so we can. Um, unfortunately, when I ripped the paper up, I ripped most of it up, <laughs> said that we're here because they're looking for uh, a special guest accommodation. They're looking for <coughs> approval to have a special guest accommodation and accessory structure and use of it as a seasonal residence for the college. That's what it says here, mm -hmm. which I understand. And uh, all of a sudden I'm hearing things like what we would like, the wall we would like to take out. This work's already been done. There have been plumbers, electricians, uh, masons. They've already done this work. They didn't ask. They didn't come and say, can we do this? And you guys said, yes or no, that might be okay, that might not. They've already done it. It's still finished. So I mean, is the wall already done? I'm uh, pretty sure. I, I don't, I don't, I don't go peeking in windows. Well, we're going to Okay. Right. And we'll now, let you come up to do it. Sorry, go ahead. To do I'm a rebuttal. I'm a builder. I jump you'll get a lot rebuttal. of hoops. Okay. I've been through CAM. I have to do everything to do tiny little things. Um, these, they came in. They did all the work. But now they're, all they're asking for is permission to use it as a seasonal cottage. But what about a, Where's the permit for all the work that they're doing? Uh, all of a sudden, there's a silk fence. You know, when I when I raised the alarm, a silk fence was supposed to go in. They went to Rings End, they put it up. That's not a silk fence. That has to have hay bales, that has to be in the dirt. It's not, it's just tacked up to look nice. So all this work has happened to the cottage. So I think we're into a, instead of asking for permission, begging for, for forgiveness situation, which, scares me because they've done the work on this cottage. And to my knowledge, the septic system for this cottage is a 55 gallon drum buried in the front yard. That's it. When Dot DuPont lived there, she had a lady that would live there for a few weeks in the summer and no money was allowed to change hands and that was it, just her. Now, you put three, four people in there in the summer Toilets flushing. Where's it going? And that's sand. It's going in. It's going into Long Island Sound. Um, so, so my my biggest concern is we're not here to just say yes they can live in the cottage. We're, we should be here saying, well, can you side it? Can you put windows in? Is there lead paint? Is there this? Is there that? That work's already been done, and none of us were notified. It just happened, and here we are. So why do I even have to get pull permits when I do jobs if they can just come in and do it and then go, oh, it's done? Okay. That was, that was a question. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. That's why I want to hear, I want to hear their side of it, but I hear your side of it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anybody else wishing to speak against the application? Yes, please. My name is Diane Petra, and I represent Wingate Association. Um, we don't live in that area. We, we live a couple hundred feet up on the plateau, but we do share the beach and the harbor. Um, we've got a cabana and a beach and a deck that we've, uh, that we've refurbished since Sandy. Um, and our, the members of our association um, are actually happy that somebody's cleaning up and working on, on, the, on the beach house. There's a little bit of a concern for fire and, and vandalism. Um, 
but the biggest concern is the fact that there will be people living there consistently um, and that the septic situ situation could affect the beach and where we sit and swim all the time. And I did talk to Dennis Johnson about this. Um, he assured me that um, the cesspool that's there meets the requirement uh, for the number of bathrooms and bedrooms. Um, but he also noted that um, that the Weissmans were considering um, very seriously putting in an additional septic system, working it in um, in addition to um, the septic system for the main house. So we feel much more much confident about that as long as that's what's going to be happening. As long as somebody's keeping an eye and keeping the water clean, that's our concern. Okay, Thanks. thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to make a comment about the application for, against, or any other questions? Uh, would you like to make a rebuttal, uh, Mr. Bennett? Uh, just a couple of remarks. Sure. Uh, the, the suggestion was made that you know, the, there's no CAM application. Uh, this is the, the activity of refurbishing is, is an exempt activity. And again, we're not increasing the size of the building or the footprint or anything of that kind. So it's, it's not CAM worthy in that respect. Um, and for everybody's uh, edification, there is a building permit for the work that's being done to, uh, and that was part of the application I submitted to you, uh, to remove the, uh, change the wiring, do the siding, the windows, the roof, and so forth. And that's, and that's all that's being done. And you have the building permit before you have the zoning room? No, no, uh, uh, Reggie signed off on it as well. It's a, it's a building permit right. for renovations right. on the property. It's repairs. It's repairs. We're not... It's repairs. I mean, let me, let me just so I'm clear. I mean, what normally happens, George, is an applicant comes in with a building permit, staff looks it over, and if they see something in there which triggers a cam or triggers uh, a need for a variance or some other kind of permission, that's where it gets picked up. But if it's simply... I mean, like, if I want to do some wiring in my house to something, you just issue the building permit if there's no other commissions involved. Is that, that correct? I think, I mean, apparently Reggie did issue the building permit for this repair work. Well, that's what I mean. So and she at was the convinced. Same time she identified and discussed with Mr. Bennett the need to, uh, to obtain the use of the special permit in order to use it in accordance with the description of use that they provided. Okay, but not to do the work. The that, work. That work Apparently, Reggie determined it was okay. Okay. Because that's right. But that's the town staff of the building actually does that. It's not okay until the special permit right. is approved. Okay. I understand. And she made that distinction. Okay. Yeah. Yes, she did. And that's on the, that's on the uh, permit, actually. Okay. And the permit, by the way, has been published, so it's been noticed. <coughs> um, uh, so, so I guess I would say that about that. The, um, in fact, Mr. Johnson said we could continue to use the existing uh, cesspool system that's there. I actually, my recollection was it was a 92 gallon drum, but it doesn't matter because as you see, we're taking, uh, taking that out, we're going to abandon all of that and we're going to have a conforming septic system. The test holes have been dug, Mr. Johnson has approved those, and, and that's fine. So you're putting in a new septic system for, this for, the, for the cottage, and then when you, if and when you do something with the main house, you'll exactly. address and, and I would just, at that time. And I, I guess I appreciate Mr. Baldwin's concerns about the, the property, and my clients are concerned about it too, and I'm not wishing to comment on anybody's architectural tastes, but I think that the chances are that what's there is uh, going to be removed and be replaced by something much more tasteful and much more keeping with, based on what I've seen so far from our architect. But there's not going to be an opportunity for us to diverge from the regulations. We have plenty of setback. It's a two, almost a two-acre parcel. The property slopes down to the west. There's a lot of area for septic. There's already a septic system for the house, um, and so you know, all those permits will be obtained. All that stuff will be done. The height requirements, the cam requirements, the setback requirements, the square footage requirements, all that stuff, we have to apply for, and we're going to comply with it. And if we can't, that's what they make variances for. But we actually don't have any any lack of confidence that we can put an acceptable, attractive building in there and comply with your regulations. And if, I don't, frankly don't know if we're in 100 feet of water either, but if we are, then there'll be a CAM application. And, and I, um, but I, you know, what you've heard here tonight is that this was always used as a residence and had a kitchen in 1940, apparently. And, and the issue is not, apparently not even nuisance. It's a technical argument, which I'm not sure works, given 
what your predecessor board did or commission did um, in its approval. And I would just note that the word auxiliary, because I went down and pawed through the many volumes of regulations to, to find this transition uh, into the new regulations, and the word auxiliary is not in your regulations circa 1980, so 79, so I don't know what was meant, I suspect accessory. That's what it is, that's what it's remained. And that's what we're asking for. We're asking for a small interim period, interregnum when, when the new house is being built. And after that, it becomes an accessory and, and we have the attributes that we would like in it. Um, the wall uh, the, of, of ill fame was removed, it is true, because we had to get the floor up, because we had to get the, the joists underneath. Those have been fixed. The floor has been put back down. The same wall with the same door in it has been rebuilt. Which wall? I, I, I thought, I thought that, that was this porch wall. wall. And this is this porch wall. Back. We want to take it out, but but it, you know we understood what our permit was. Yeah. And so you put it back. We put it back. It's all framed. Where, where is it shown? There it is. Right there. That's this wall. That's that's the before. I don't have an after. I didn't because well, what's, what's that? That's right next to the fireplace. That's right here. Well, that's the, the existing. You're looking through past. Now I'm in here and I'm looking. That's the mythical refrigerator. Right. It's not mythical. It's real. This this there was a door framed here. Okay. And that's. So, and, and the sun porch wasn't winterized, was... None of it's winterized. I mean, it, it's, it's still, still the same, same, Why do they call it a sun porch, then, as opposed to... I guess it's... I, I don't know. <laughs> I, if I, I honestly got it. This is... Our architect... I was getting nervous when Larry said No, yeah. okay. Our architect put these together. It's referred to as a sun porch in your... Um, uh, your... Uh, successor records. And so, at least we're being consistent. Uh, George, just one other. When the building permit came in, it was determined that no CAM activity, uh, regulated activity, was taking place. So right. CAM was so it's not like they skirted no. the need for it. It was determined by staff that a CAM right. was not required in this situation. Right. Okay. Can I ask? And we all sat down on a table. I mean, you know, we had a conversation, George. I mean, I'm not sure. I was you weren't there. there. I was not there. But Reggie was there, and all right. Mr. Johnson. Was I have. A, I have a question. Um, When you do the renovation of the new house, yeah. is any of that that preliminary planning be done to know for sure that there is room on the spot for two septic systems? Yes. One of the first things that my clients did was go to uh, uh, the engineers uh, who actually designed the system for the um, uh, original house uh, and had this conversation. I have a memo to that effect confident that, that it will test and they can get the system in as, as well. And they have also designed the system for the cottage now and are confident that there's room for both. Okay. So can I ask you a question, please? Um, I'm trying to get my hands around the timeline. Um, this is not going to be heated, and yet she's going to be living in it while the work is being done. No, no. It says, we say seasonal. Yeah. Right. And, and it's not going to be heated, and we're not putting insulation in the walls. And, so this work is going to be completed on this bigger house during the summer? I guess. I mean, if, if we get the plans and we can get the permits in place, I would project that they would start and it would be done this, you know, started this summer. I doubt that it will be finished. But as George suggested, they want to be nearby when this work is going on. So um, she would be living in an unheated cottage? During the summer. Right, but during, during the winter. Oh, during the winter, no. She's not going to be we specifically said seasonal. We're not right. So you have other another residence someplace yeah, else that you can. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Or, or or do what the do what the workmen are doing today, which is put all the scraps in the fireplace, trying to warm up when the wind is blowing. All right. Any other questions from the commission? Any the, other comments from the public? That was a joke. She's not. Yeah, sure. I understand. <laughs> uh, the the trailer, um, the trailer option, the as of right trailer option, mm -hmm. if. Um, um, can you just briefly describe to us what what the applicant is entitled to while they're if they were 
redoing this primary residence and did not have this cottage available or if we were to deny this for some reason, what would be available to them to live in, assuming that she didn't have an alternate residence also? That's, yes. If you have a building permit for either a new house or to renovate an existing house, you can have a trailer on the lot during the time of construction. Uh, that can be done anywhere in Guilford. Understood. Okay. All right, then. I'm going to close the public hearing on this application, and we're going to move on to uh, Maria Rushkin. This is a special permit for a meditation group in an existing building. I believe this is across from uh, the foundry on Fair Street, George? It is. Correct. Please. My name is Ross Hennepin. I'm on the County Road in Guilford, and we are um, I'm representing the meditation group that is looking to use um, the former sculpture studio on 19 Fair Street for, uh, as a meditation space. That's the special, that's the use of the building for the special permit application. Okay, we have a letter from Dennis Johnson dated the 19th. The applicant's proposed use is compatible with existing septic system facilities currently serving the meditation studio. And then I also believe we have, um, looks like a petition or something in the file about uh, restricting the use of it. Maybe you could just review well, that for us. I think one of the concerns for the neighbors um, across the street and on either side of the Dushkin residence was the parking, because the parking has been a bit of an issue on Fair Street since the uh, Lennon Family Life had been down there. And we were saying that we are meeting twice a week for an hour on Monday and Thursday nights, an hour and a half on Thursday nights, and then once a month on Sunday mornings for a couple of hours, and that we would be very sensitive to the parking issues that are the primary concern of the neighborhood. And we would be not parking on the street, we would be using the driveway or parking around other public areas, not on Street. So then you wouldn't have a problem with having those as conditions of approval? Would we have a problem with that? Right. In other words, if we, if the application were to be granted with these restrictions. I don't think so. Okay. Anything else you'd like to present at this time? Hmm? I think that was really primarily, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. Yeah. Question. Um, Okay, questions from the commission? Questions from the public? I'm oh, sorry, David. That's the plan, uh, the site plan, so this is Fair Street, this yeah. is the existing one. Which one is 19? This is 19. No, I know, the point is 19, a larger scheme. Oh, it's the Yellow House, it's a Greek revival okay. um, with an open lot next to it across the street from the foundry. Yeah. Okay. Right. And, and then there's a driveway. There's a driveway, and then there's a walkway that goes back to this is the building. But the, the building is that last. Um, I don't think I've ever Yeah, no, you have to go into the property to actually see oh, okay. the building. Okay. It's hidden by shrubs. Uh, is that parking? <coughs> is this something else? Just Dishkin Studio Building. That's the studio. That's, the, that's this one. That's, okay. the, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's uh, David's uh, sculpture studio. Okay. And this was when it was converted from the garage and into the Okay, so the building is still there. Right. You're not really doing anything. No. What is this abstract drawing? Right. I don't know. I, don't right. know. I, mean, I think it might be gardens. I mean, I guess there's a lot of gardens. Garden. Well, gardens and sort of walkways. Oh, this is the studio. Yeah, yeah, this is the exact way. This is the house. These are planters? <laughs> um, Maybe. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think the other, like, I think this is a garden. So how many parking spaces do you think you actually have? If you want to well, for, with compact cars, I'd say they're probably six. Um, you know, if you have an SUV, it's not going to be a, right. it's going to be a little bit of an issue. Okay. George, this, this was looked at, right, in terms of parking and accepted. <coughs> Right. And I'm sorry. Wait. Was there's there any parking no specific requirement in the zoning regulations? This is a place. Of, this is a place of worship under the zoning regulations. Okay. Um, the extent of the activity that described in the application is pretty minimal in terms of the number of uh, worshippers or meditators. Um, there's lots of room to park on the lot in the driveway, in other areas. Okay. 
Question, uh, anyone else have a question from the commission before we go to the public? I was just uh, asking, did you say it's a place of worship? Well, that's what we're defining it as under the zoning code. Residential zones allow place of worship by special permit. You see that? Can we place a maximum number? I mean, we've had issues with quote unquote places of worship before when yeah. it goes from me and my three friends to me and my 23 friends. Yes. I, in my opinion, you can. I think they state in their application a certain number. They describe uh, five to five meditation group, five to eight persons. As many as 15 on Sundays. Right. Well, that was just a carpool testimony, but it's part of the no. application. No, well, well, no, it, it, says it says it's written in the application. Well, yeah, it's, it's in the, um, where's the page? <coughs> page. Right, that's why I just wanted to make sure if, if it's random. Well, it's actually 15. It's sort of Oh, it says 10? Well, it was 15. Yeah, it was, it was more like 15. This is listed as 15. But this, this is, is the, the petition. The petition lists okay. 15. So I, so I just wanted to make sure if we set conditions, you know, you would be agreeable to these. Because it seems like the, some of, we'll, we'll listen to the public, but the, the number of people would be agreeable as long as there's some constraints on it like this, and that's why I just asked if these were yeah, numbers. Yeah, the, the constraints, when I talk to people in the, in the neighborhood, they seem to be the most, the most concerned about the parking okay. um, on the street and it being congested because right. of bus and that one in the family life center. <coughs> All right, questions from the public on Hold this on. application. I'm sorry, we've got a letter uh, from, from, yeah, oh. from Dennis Johnson. Uh, the applicant proposed use is compatible with the existing septic system facilities currently serving the mediation studio. Okay. Any other meditation, 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 meditation? Any other questions? I'll think about mediation. <laughs> mediation, meditation. Yeah. All right. Any questions from the public on the application? Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the application? Is there anybody wishing to speak against it? Is there are any questions from anyone in the audience? Any comments or anybody on the commission? Okay. Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing on this matter. And we will move on to the miscellaneous amendments. George, maybe you can present these sure. uh, to both us and the public, and then we'll ask for questions and comments. These are uh, actually two sets of uh, two different proposals. First two deal with the uh, issue that was raised um, several months ago with regard to the definition of attachment um, when dealing with an accessory apartment application. And the zoning committee has drafted the proposed changes that you see here with the, uh, with the hope that these would resolve any ambiguities about what that means. Um, the first part is to modify the definition of building accessory by adding uh, additional words as shown under number one. Those words are the connection of an accessory building to a principal building by means of an open porch, breezeway, passageway, carport, or other such minor or insubstantial structure with or without a roof shall not be deemed to make such partially detached accessory building an addition to the principal building or a part of the principal building, nor to make them one building. So, if, um, is, that, is that clear? Mm -hmm. Very. David okay. thinks it's really great, actually. Crystal clear. Okay. The key word there is uh, the partially detached. Uh, the definition of something that's partially detached is one, then refers back to open porch, breezeway, passageway, carport, or other minor insubstantial structure with or without a roof. If, it's, well, if the, the connection is... Not. If the connection is one of those things, then it's partially detached. <coughs> and then we then use the expression partially detached in um, three or four more places in the zoning code under 273.19. Uh, we say about the middle of that paragraph, accessory apartments may be located within the dwelling unit or in addition thereto, or may be located in detached or partially detached accessory building or an addition thereto. So that's to make clear that if the building is partially detached, it has to be considered an accessory building for the purposes of an accessory apartment. 
Uh, that, in fact, that's exactly what the next sentence says. Accessory apartments are allowed in detached or partially detached buildings in order to provide a housing types more affordable. <coughs> the partially detached or detached building, as you know, has to be at least 10 years old in order for it to be eligible for a special permit application. Um, we go on to use the term or partially detached again under B, uh, Part B of 273-119, that's accessory park regulations, where we also then use the or, or partially detached language again. Uh, also under number eight, for accessory apartment, a detached or partially detached building, the commission shall consider the proximity of the structure to adjoining dwelling units. And then we add the or partially detached language again um, in section B11, where we talk again about uh, the appearance of the buildings. So that's what we've tried to do. Um, and then there's what, 273-36A on the back is the other? That's, a, that's another amendment dealing with okay. another subject. Do you want to deal with both? No, no. Why don't we take no, no, these? No, 36A. No, it's related to this. It's related to yeah. this. Yeah. Number four is related. Numbers one Number and three. two and four. four. Are They're closely. all related. Four related. Why don't we take one, two, and four first, and then we'll come back and do oh, okay. three. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, number, part, number four, <coughs> we used that it's partially detached language again. Uh, so that's that's part of this first amendment. Number three, then, is a separate. Right, we'll come back to get that one right <coughs> next. Uh, questions from the commission for George on these modifications. <coughs> is there anybody me, in the public? Let me, clear, let me show sure. you a, a picture that uh, passed this around. Eric Anderson gave me this. Um, it um, shows a building that was developed up in North Guilford. It has a single family dwelling and then an, a, an, attach, an, a, an attachment, an attaching structure that connects the garage that has an apartment above it to the main house. Um, and he basically asked a question uh, in an effort to help clarify what this all means. In that case, in the case of that building, the attach the portion of the building that attaches the garage to the main house uh, is actually heated and closed space. Uh, and he asked the question, would that therefore, would that trigger this partially detached, would that be considered partially detached under these regulations? Um, it's clearly not an open porch, it's not a breezeway, um, it's not a carport probably not or other minor or insubstantial structure. The use of the term passageway was the word was the word that he had a little trouble with. And passageway well, this is our this is already built. Oh yeah, this is right. this already exists. Right. This is an accessory apartment that we approved. Yeah. As I it think it I think the intent was <coughs> to work our way past the O if it's not wholly, completely separate, detached, with absolutely no connection whatsoever, if you touch it even a little bit, therefore it's now part of the main building. This mm -hmm. is our attempt to say, we actually are intelligent people, even if we don't always act like it, and so we will have the ability to discern between something that is a okay. attempt right. to get around our regulations as opposed to one that is in conformity to it. So I, I mean, unless is, is anybody besides uh, Eric asking the question uh, in that photograph, has anyone else said, I've been thinking about this and this is, has unintended consequences or isn't going to work the way you think it's going to work? That's it. He's the only person who spoke to me about it. Okay. Nobody's been thinking about it. <coughs> um, so his concern was with the word passage. I guess his concern was would that qualify? Would I mean, I, I think it would. When I, and looking at it, that, that, that would, would be part. That would not be permitted. Then that, no, that no, that would be permitted. So that pass it. That pass. That's not a passageway under this definition. No, that's actually it's heated part of the structure. and it's heated. part of the structure. Okay. To me, it's not. Well, you have to a, make some. You're going to have to make a judgment call from time to time. Right. Mm -hmm. right. right. I mean, I nothing. Want, I want the ability to make the judgment call <laughs> rather than to say, well, technically Based on they, something. they put some bailing wire yeah. and tied the buildings right. together. Well, this goes attached. a long way to making that. Okay. Improving that was my. All right. Are there any questions from the public on this, or is there anyone wishing to speak either for or against this part, this part of the amendment? 
Okay, then what I'll do, George, is we'll close the public okay. hearing with regard to that. And can you break, give us uh, an overview of the amendment to 273-109? Right, that's an amendment that was, uh, also, it's also recommended by the uh, uh, zoning committee. The desire with regard to this is to um, ensure that when there's a proposal to amend the zoning map or the zoning text, the commission makes maximum opportunity for public input and the way that this the way that's envisioned to occur under this provision is to mandate require that there be uh, a second date um, upon which the public hearing any public hearing related to zoning map or zoning text would also have to be held so there would have to be two public hearings uh, on any zoning map or zoning text amendment. All right, let me uh, read a couple of letters that we received on this. Uh, first one's from the Economic Development Commission. Uh, I am writing on behalf of the EDC to express some concern over the proposed amendment to the Town of Guilford <coughs> Zoning Code, Chapter 273-109. The proposed change would automatically require a minimum of two public hearings for petitions concerning the zoning map or text. The EDC believes that each public hearing increases costs to developers and or property owners for attorneys, architects, engineers, and other consultants. Delays, even short delays, can cause much longer delays due to weather funding and the availability of construction equipment and subcontractors, as well as the loss of prospective tenants. While the EDC supports the spirit and, and intent of the proposed change, which is greater transparency, we believe this could be accomplished by looking at ways to help the public understand the hearing process and that will be discussed prior to hearings. The EDC respectfully requests that the Planning Zoning Commission explore this approach before increasing the burden on developers and property owners. We also have a letter from the, uh, it's, by the way, that's signed Stephen Copps, Chairman. We also have a letter from the Shoreline Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the Chamber would like to add its voice to that of the EDC in requesting that the Planning and Zoning Commission consider leaving the language in Section 273-109 as it presently stands. We feel that requiring an application to go before the Commission a minimum of two times would place an undue burden upon the applicants. There are many times when a change would not be complex enough to require additional hearings and could be resolved with a single appearance. The public has ample opportunities to read the posted agenda and appear if they are concerned. If you'd like to discuss this uh, further, please contact us, signed by uh, the President and the Vice President of that organization. We also have one other one from uh, Peggy Russell. This change will improve our process in two ways. The public will know more about any request before it goes to a vote, and the members of the commission will have an opportunity to review the application beyond the rush of the hearing. Right now, our process keeps interested members of the public less informed. The notices we print in the paper use confusing technical terms and references that may uh, obfuscate the true consequences of a zone change. People don't show up if they don't, if it doesn't seem important and our Planning and Zoning Commission has sometimes approved changes on the same evening as the applicant's presentation. When people discover the significance of an application after approval, it gives the impression of stealth or ambush. Under this new procedure, the public will have either two or three full weeks to hear details about zone changes between the applicant's public presentation and the time the Commission is allowed to vote. Since Guilford staff now routinely makes draft minutes and videos available, uh, meeting, uh, videos of meetings available in the Planning and Zoning Office on the town website and on YouTube and GCTV. This proce procedure change will, produ will produce more openness than requiring more mail notices. Fairness and the appearance of fairness are central goals of all commissions in town, but PZ Planning and Zoning faces more controversy <coughs> and uses arcane and technical mechanisms. It is especially prone to seeming designed for insiders. We will greatly reduce that impression by this change. Please express support for this by emailing letters to us who are appearing at the meeting this evening at the uh, Green Community Center, Walter Corbier, Guilford. I approve this new procedure, Peggy Russell. She copied my statement about it. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions? Um, isn't there another letter? Uh, um, if there is, I don't have it. This was on. Oh, this one. Right here. Oh, the GPA one. Okay. Let me take a look at that one. 
we write to you today on behalf of our board in favor of the automatic continuance of public hearings and zone changes to a second date. At the GPA, we focus on heritage, tourism, historic walking tours, and historic preservation that make this town a destination, a destination to live, a destination to shop, and to spend time and money and spend our lives and raise children. We are in favor of this change for the same reason that residents and small businesses should support it. We want to make and keep this town a historic preservation destination. To do this, we must give the residents and business full opportunity to see the advantage and disadvantages of Joan zone changes before the PNZ takes action. The community discourse will also be improved by this change. It will be less contentious because people and businesses will have confidence and substantive uh, have confidence that substantive changes <coughs> that put their lifestyle and livelihoods at risk are not slipping past without their knowledge or input. This commission will restore a lot of public confidence with the procedural change even though some won't immediately grasp its, its significance. Our historic heritage small business residents and children will certainly be well served over time by the openness that it fosters and it's signed by uh, Shirley Gerioni and Rob uh, Vavasor, the co-presidents. All right, uh, any questions from the public on this? Anybody wishing to speak in favor of this change? Anybody wishing to speak against it? Mike. Well, no, I'll speak in, in favor of it. I think uh, the point that someone raised, Mike's the same in Wood Drive. Um, I think the, uh, the point someone made in one of the letters about the public perception that sometimes things happen too quickly at the town level, at the commission level, without uh, people being aware. You know, on the one hand, we've got state statutes. I know that, that all, all our public hearings are in compliance with all the notification requirements of the state statutes and under our zoning regs, but that doesn't give enough uh, to the fact that there still is that perception we still could do a better job of getting the town involved and making sure that all the taxpayers get uh, a fair chance to be heard. And then speaking as a former commissioner, I think it's, it's a good idea to have an opportunity to get educated on the issue and to get a full spectrum of ideas before making a decision. But there is a lot of information presented. Sometimes we get stats of papers at the meeting and then within an hour or two we're asked to decide on it and I think uh, you know there's always a balancing of interest it's the interest in getting it right the first time there's the interest of not unduly burdening the applicant and I appreciate the comments or in the letter from the Economic Development uh, Commission um, but you know keeping in mind that this proposal I think would be limited to just requested made changes to the zones right not just any public hearing this is for a very specific type of uh, of application so you know I, I'd like to express my favor thank you very much anyone else wishing to express an opinion about this sir I'm Steve Cox chairman of the economic development commission <coughs> and I just want to be clear I mean we Think you know we're in favor of sunshine laws. I think there should be full disclosure of everything. All we're saying is, for passing this change, that any, any other ways to satisfy the same goals be explored. That's all. Okay. Do you have any suggestions <laughs> or other alternative methods to accomplish the same purpose but maybe in a more streamlined or efficient way for we do people. not okay uh, I do plan on bringing up on our agenda uh, first Tuesday of next month but that may be too late oh okay. should give us a chance well, I think we should get this done quick before we have to anyone else uh, <laughs> I'm just saying wishing to make a comment yeah no I don't think we need more public all right, I, hearing none, I'll close the public hearing on this matter, and I'll ask for a motion to approve the revised agenda. So moved. Very second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, if I can get a motion on the uh, first application, which was for the 42 Boston Post Road special permit for the accessory apartment in a detached structure. Uh, voted that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve a special permit for an accessory apartment for uh, Maria and Garama Ailey at 42 Boston Post Road, Map 43, Lot 3, as shown on an application dated 2514, and is heard at a public hearing on March 19, 2014. Um, this application is approved with 
no conditions and this application is approved <coughs> based upon a finding that it conforms with the zoning code the special permit is effective on march 28th 2014 and upon filing with the town clerk second okay, okay. Uh, discussion this seems pretty straightforward the application itself meets all the requirements <coughs> in the code so the requirements of the code uh no negative input as i recall from the public on this issue so um i think we, we're in a pretty good position to move forward on it so i'll call for a vote all in favor aye, aye. anybody opposed okay that for was the, for the record i'm abstaining purely on the purely on the fact that i did not know that mr jones was going to be speaking and i have had professional relationships with mr jones so i'm simply abstaining i let uh, the record show david has abstained from consideration and from the vote Okay, uh, Mara Weissman, this is the special permit for a guest accommodation in an accessory apartment. I'll also call the Commission's attention uh, to the fact that we also have a motion to waive the A2 survey, which uh, we'll take up as well, but why don't we get a motion on the table to, um, on the application itself. Voted that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve a special permit for Myra Weissman at 117 Andrews Road, Map 12, Lot 76B, as described in an application dated 2-14-2014 and as heard at a public hearing on March 19, 2014. This application is approved with the following conditions, um, that it not be used at, as an apartment, an accessory apartment at any future date, and um, well, this application is approved based upon a finding that it conforms with the zoning code. This special permit is effective on March 28, 2014, and upon filing with the town clerk. Additionally, there is a motion for um, a waiver of an A2 survey for this site. Okay. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Discussion on the application. <coughs> uh, both of the individuals who spoke um, to a greater or lesser extent against this application had a, a lot of valid points uh, in general, um, but the points were general and um, they weren't as directly applicable to the actual situation for this application. Some of their points were um, more focused on the possibilities related to the, the current primary larger residents. Um, and it may be that they would want to explore that or the applicant also might want to consider contacting them and, and um, yeah, involving them a little bit in the in the uh, next phase the um, I think that a, a large chunk of what the applicant is requesting is both grandfathered and as of right uh, particularly since they also would have the right to stay on this property um, regardless in a trailer or something else. I think this is the most streamlined solution and, and they've sort of bent over backwards to make sure um, in an instance where a lot of this would not only not be detectable by us but also would in all likelihood not be enforceable by us. Okay. Um with regard to the main house, to the extent that we're going to need any approvals or applications, I think that'll have to come up at the time when there's a, a plan that can be put on the table to determine if anything is even required here. But uh, to the extent that it is, that's the time to take it up, not at this point in time, since uh, that's really a hypothetical situation. Uh, I agree with you. I think a lot of what we have here is <coughs> grandfathered. Uh, as it is, and um, I don't see anything here that appears to be that unreasonable uh, that the applicant is asking for. Um, so, in general, I'm in favor of this, unless someone can convince me otherwise. Uh, I'm going to vote for it because there's there's a lot of background here that I'm not sure that that I understand in terms of timelines. Um, but at the end of the day, what I look for, I personally look for is if we approve this is it going to make the uh, the neighborhood and or the property uh, better than it was and is it going to is it going to be better for the environment than it was and uh, the fact that they've, they've they've gone to the extent of, of putting in a new of putting in a new septic system in this building to replace a, a cesspool close to the to, to waterfront 
and it sounds like uh, that just instead of putting a coat of paint on it, they actually understood that there were some structural issues with the building and went ahead and fixed those also that, I, that I'm in favor of this. Okay. And I, I just wanted to add sure. about the 1979 minutes. I think that there might have been some confusion on behalf of um, the individual, uh, Baldwin, I believe, in terms of, you know, his, how he looked at um, what the condition sort of laid out. And I think that that might have led him to almost believe that we have some, we have, like, some, we have to do something to sort of prevent them from fulfilling this application. When in fact, I look at the minutes and I see it as they're before us again and it's the same sort of motion. So mm -hmm. I don't see okay. a problem. Well, I, I, I think the import of the language, instead of saying that you're gonna have to move or convert it to full year round residence or demolish it, I think what they're saying is it needs to revert to an auxiliary type structure, presumably, implicit in that was you have to remove the cooking facilities <laughs> from the uh, structure <coughs> after you've li you know, lived in it, your house is built, and then you can move back into your main house. You're going to turn this into just simply uh, an office or a studio or something, but not to have it from all appearances appear to be an accessory apartment, whether you've rented it out or not rented it out. I think that was what was probably uh, I suspect that's what was meant by the condition. Um, I think that was probably what was interpreted by the people who came and testified. The thing that I was struck by is uh, um, it does appear to me that they are expanding the um, size of the cottage by incorporating the uh, sun porch into part of the main living area. I don't think we define a sun porch uh, as being part of a living area or not, depending on what, whether the couch is leather or not. Um, so it struck me that they are expanding the size of this. I think that requires a variance. Uh, it's not, as far as I can tell, expanding the footprint of the building. I would anticipate that a variance might have been granted, uh, but that's not something this commission is supposed to do. Our commission is supposed to say uh, we approve or don't approve of something if it's uh, not an expansion. And in this case, I think it is an expansion. And I don't think we have the authority to, to approve it as presented to us. Now, if the sun, if the sun room is walled in, um, I does lack that a, lacking a site visit, I don't know the extent of whether this is a. It says sun porch on the drawing, so I don't know the answer to that. Does that solve the concern, or well, if it, our, if it our, were our educated and illustrious zoning enforcement officer, her opinion was this is an expansion of a nonconformity. <coughs> So is it worth a site visit? Well, wait, if it was an expansion of a nonconformity, no. why does it? I think it that she, I think by what she was referring to there was the original proposed plan, which actually included a larger space. Once the plant, the building permit was revised to eliminate that. It does enlargement of a cottage floor area by incorporating the sun porch into the living room and increasing the floor area is an expansion of a nonconformity. Is there a different plan she, she was referring to? I mean, this is dated Feb 6. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Well, here's the problem. I mean, if she's I don't think saying she there was an expansion of a nonconformity, how could she issue the building permit yeah, without that's right? That's what I don't understand. Without getting either a variance or having this I commissioner's. I can't answer that question. Well, let me. I mean, what I thought I heard is that the sun porch room, whatever you want to call it, was removed. The joists were fixed, right. and then it was put right back as it was prior to that. There was no expansion. That's what I understood. I, I, if, if, if I but they are now requesting that wall to be removed. And that's what David's got as a concern because that, um, to his mind, may be increasing the total footprint of the living space into the sunroom. Well, well, the sunroom is closed in anyway, right? It's already enclosed, so, I mean, they could be living in it now. Right, there's no HVAC in it. There's no HVAC <laughs> in the main cottage. <laughs> right, so. What's the difference? Me? I don't know what I don't know what the site looks like. Well, how, how, do, you, how I, do you? I don't know. I, I, I think Reggie is, is her learned advice is one I always uh, adhere to. So. Okay, but but nonetheless, she issued the building permit. I think, yeah, my understanding is that that she's no longer holding to that requirement. Okay, but I can't say that for sure. So, 
Well, she, uh, why else would here. she have issued the building permit right, if it right. was that's, left that's, hanging like that? Right. That's, so, that's my understanding, but I can't. I don't know that for sure. All right. They, they, could I ask you a question mm -hmm. now? How do you get to to thinking that the term an auxiliary type structure is saying you have to remove the kitchen stuff? Because under the definition of an auxiliary use. That's 7336. Yeah, but that's today's that's today's code. Yeah. That's not the code that was back there when this was when this was done. What day is I, it now? Well, no, I'm saying this 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 is from 1979. Yeah. I that's think when were, the, I think I don't were, I don't know I have no knowledge of what the zoning code was in 1979. I don't my under, I think that what they were referring to in 1979 was that the building be revert to an accessory type use, which would be like a garage or storage area or something like that, not for human habitation. That's probably what they were referring to in 79. So not no human habitation whatsoever. That's my guess. Okay. So unless they make it into a full time residence as, okay. as but that's clearly not the case. But then subsequent to 79 we've created a provision in the regulations to allow accessory buildings to be made into human habitation. Right. Offices, guest cottages, and so forth. With kitchens, with if it has a kitchen, then it's an accessory apartment. So this has a kitchen, but the argument is that that's non a non-conforming part of the accessory right. structure. Okay. All right. <laughs> so well, I guess it's a little bit. Whew, we can go around on this forever. I mean, the thing that that I'm. I guess most yeah. impressive is that Reggie did grant the building permit, and she doesn't have a habit of granting them if there's missing variances or missing That's my uh, application as well, but I can't say that for certain. Well, I mean, why else she would you have, do it? And she wouldn't have recommended that this come before you right. if, it, if she felt that it required a variance. I right. Think, I think the most interesting wrinkle here, and Frank, I'm, this is where I'm responding directly. <coughs> Typically, we have buildings in which there is a sun porch that is completely uninsulated, unenclosed, unwindowed, whatever, <coughs> and then people expand into that, and that is an expansion of the living space. The fact that, for whatever bizarre reason, this entire structure is being perceived as as being uninsulated, seasonal, um, unheated, um, I mean, that sounds kind of like my house, um, but I mean, the fact that... even <laughs> older than this <laughs> It is. But the, 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 the fact that they are expanding the living space, yeah. the fact that it is all s seasonal is what's throwing people a little bit for a loop. But if this, in fact, were a insulated yeah. apartment and then they said, we're going to build into the garage, we're going to build into the porch, that is an expansion. Yeah. That's, in theory, not allowed. I, I, I'm seeing that's what's happening here, and that's why I'm sticking yeah, my see, I, I would, flag in the ground. Well, see, if it was insulated and they expanded into an uninsulated space, which they insulated and turned into something habitable, I, I could see that. But the fact that the whole thing is uninsulated, to me, it's sort of the, right. it's not, yeah, it's not it's a not year-round same kind of a thing. But everybody's got to have their own opinion, so I think we've discussed it. Why don't we call for a vote? All in favor? Is there anybody opposed? Okay. Reasons stated. So noted. Okay, you're approved. All right, moving Nine. forward, um, I'm going to do the uh, Dushkin application, and then we're going to come back and pick up the camp application, which we cite walk before we go to the amendments. So if I can get a motion on the uh, Dushkin application, which is a special permit for the meditation group. Uh, voted that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve a special permit for a place of worship for Maria Dushkin at 19 Fair Street, Map 39, Lot 30, as shown on an application dated 2 1914, and as heard at a public hearing on March 19, 2014. Um, the application is approved with the following conditions. Um, the applicant shall meet a maximum of three evenings a week from 6 to 9 p.m. and um, the maximum number of congregants shall be no more than um, 20 <coughs> persons. This application is approved based upon a finding that it conforms with the zoning code and that the proposed activity will have no adverse impact on the surrounding neighborhood. The special permit is effective on March 28th 
2014 and upon filing with the town clerk. Okay, do I hear a second? Does also include uh, uh, a Sunday meeting? Yes, it does. It says that uh, seven to eight, two meetings a week, and then they meet the first Sunday morning of each month. Yeah, he said three. He said, he said three. three. He said three, so that oh, should okay. be. But you said say, three evenings. But you said evenings. You want to amend it? Oh, oh and, okay. And oh, just three meetings. Um, uh, three uh, amend three evenings to three meetings, and uh, Sunday events are explicitly allowed. Okay. Do I hear a second in that motion? Second. Okay. Discussion. Well, I mean, it seems reasonable. We didn't seem to have uh, much, too many comments from the public other seems than like with the conditions around. that we've. Yeah, yeah. It seems like she actively tried to once a month. Sure, it was all set. Three meetings a week. Positive energy. Sundays are explicitly allowed. Six to nine, maximum of 20 persons. Uh, 20 persons. Okay. As there, I'm sorry, David? Is that bad? Well, my only observation is that is the application says five to eight persons twice a week, Monday and Thursdays, meditation once a month on Sunday with possibly 10 persons. So if I read the newspaper notice, and we all know how important the newspaper notice is, I might see that, I might come down to the zoning office, read the application and say, okay, I can handle Monday and Thursday and once a month Sunday. You're they, they proposing has a good point. something yeah. broader than what was in the application. I'm sorry? The legal notice didn't include all that language. No, no, but it included something that I would go down to the zoning right, office and right. I would read the application yeah, yeah. because I'm a diligent citizen and I would say, oh, okay, yeah. I can handle that. What did the notice right. actually we, say? Yeah, what did it actually well, say? Well, we, we can't, ex before we get there, we can't, we, it's always been the policy of this commission never to expand upon what was noticed. However, we could reduce what was noticed, okay? The reason for that is just what David points out, that if you see an application, you read and say, well, it's only 10 people, and then we go and say, well, no, it could be 20. I might not have protested at 10, but I might have had a problem at 20. And that's reasonable, but what so, did the actual notice say? Well, that's what I think we need to go back to, and that's what we should approve. I read it at the beginning. The notice says yeah, special permit for meditation for meditation, meditation building. Yeah, and that's, that's all it says. Also, it doesn't you can go down and, and, and what you would then do is, is, as they say, is at the bottom of the notice says, go to the planning and zoning office and read the application. And the application mm -hmm. says, five to eight persons twice a week, Monday to Monday, Thursday, once a month on Sunday, possibly ten persons. So it, let's say someone actually. Did all has a practically did <laughs> what, what would actually happen? Would they say <coughs> you guys need to reconsider, or we would have to reconsider it? Or well, I, it, they were improperly I think if it was challenged, mm -hmm. somebody would win that case because we gave them more than what was noticed they had notice of. So, what would happen? They could get it overturned. Uh, well, it would get sent back to us, and then we'd right. have to notice it and we'd do it have over to again. do it over again. So, so is that. Well, I think what I would do is let's approve it based on what they asked for. If they want to come back and request a modification, so be it. But Will I you amend your motion? Then? I, I've just got an establishment clause problem here uh, where I think that if we keep it too tight and there's a problem, um, we're, we're right. doing just what they asked for. Do you, right. Do you, if well, we limited it down, I think right. you have an argument, but we're okay. and, 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 them. Did we have had issues okay. before okay. with and places of worship and No, no, I, I, I don't. Right. Let, let's approve. They can always come back, they can and, always come back and ask for an amendment. So I've got, in that case, I have, um, since we also do have the Sundays once a month included on the petition, um, and the petition has been available since March 7. Was a petition in the file that the notice it was? It was. It was in the file as of March 7. So then, this was uh, received February 18th. Ooh, my birthday. Yeah. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> I think you're now ready. Yeah, I mean, somebody could have seen that and not seen this and assumed okay. that this is what yeah, was going to be happening. And bear in mind on. that you sign a petition if you agree with it. You don't sign it if you. Yeah, but I think the point is that it's just in the file. Yeah, right. Since this is in the file, I think we can do this. Well, the only problem is that was in the file on the 7th. That was, so if I yeah. saw the notice and I went in and I just right. saw that and then didn't see this. Yeah, yeah, I mean, sell it. Do whatever you want to. I'm just saying. Um. I, I just, I think that this is, this is too tight for us to, um. So roll the dice. Well, we have a motion on the table. 
let's All of yeah, I, I think I, I would like to not amend it. We, All can, right. we can vote it down if we think <laughs> that it's technically We've already bad. discussed it, and um, fr frankly, as a practical matter, I'm not sure that this is that big a deal, right. but right. Yeah. legally, I think if someone were to challenge this, we would lose. I mean, she's just we'll someone is okay if we lose. She's this. also just as likely to have, someone if she, we only limited her 10, she'll have 30, and no one will ever say a word. Well, but that's not, not the way we should do this. No. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Well, the motion all right. doesn't want to be we amended, have, so. Uh, we have a motion on the table. We've discussed it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, David's opposed. Run, run the table on this one tonight. All right. <laughs> all right, I'm going to uh, go back to. What was the motion? Uh, the motion ultimately was. What he originally was, said was uh, six, six to nine, three times a week, maximum of 20 individuals. Sunday, Saturday morning. And no, he, he amended it to... No, and then meeting. I, then I included meetings, and then I said Sundays are explicitly allowed. Correct? Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to go back to the Philip and Lauren Camp application that we heard last time. However, we did do a site walk. This is for 299 Old Sachem's Head Road. Uh, coastal area management site plan, demolition and construction for residents, related construction activities and a new septic system within 100 feet of the critical coastal resource. Uh, can I get a motion? Okay. Can I get a motion on this before we discuss it? I have a motion Voted there if anybody would like it. Yeah, I'll read it. I think maybe it would be able to. big one. Voted that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve a coastal area management site plan application for F Philip and Lauren Camp, 299 Old Station Heads Road, map three and map three and four, lot 30 and 9A, as shown on coastal site plan property by of uh, property of Philip J and Lauren C Camp, prepared by Waldon Associates LLC, dated October 1st, 2010. Revised to March 3rd, 2014, and architectural plans, eight sheets, Surfside, the camp residence, prepared by Nathan J. Trop, AIA. The application is approved with the following conditions that the zoning enforcement officer be notified to inspect the sediment and erosion control measures prior to any demo de de demolition. <laughs> Demolition. Demolition of the site regard of the site regarding regrading. No, that says regarding. Okay. Site regrading. Soil stockpiles should be contained by silt fence and or hay bales. Soil erosion and sediment control shall, uh, measures shall be maintained until vegetation is established or suitable suitable materials are installed to the satisfaction of the Z zoning enforcement officer. The construction of the permeable paver parking area shall be supervised by a licensed engineer and a report provided by the zoning enforcement officer prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy indicating that the parking area was properly installed. This application is approved based upon a finding that, it, that with the variance granted it conforms with the zoning code and is consistent with the coastal merit management policies <coughs> of the state of Connecticut. We'll hear a second. Second. All right. We did a site walk Very in the cool. location. Yes, it is. Uh, I believe there were three issues. One uh, was the sight line views, and could you indeed see the water from the road or the public area, and would this be blocking it? And I think, uh, at least in my case, I'm convinced that you can't because of the rise of the property, so that wasn't an issue. Uh, another issue had to do with the uh, – the, uh, cupola on the top of it and there is something in the file where Reggie <coughs> had responded back and it was her practice not to count those towards the height requirements is what she said so uh, we need to take that under advisement the other item I think was a drainage issue that attorney Cronin raised for his client and when we did walk it I mean it's no question that the, the grade comes up and then it comes down and the water starts draining. Uh, the applicants do, do show on their plans, plans to mitigate that. And part of the problem, I think, is just the, the lay of the land, the way it's, it's naturally graded, that the water does come and rush down. 
I think that with the driveway coming around like this, unfortunately, goes right down into the client's area. So that piece, I'm not convinced that the construction they're doing is going to make that piece any worse, but they are going to regrade and the property the to get there. Catch the driveway. Whatever. Right, and, and to yeah. put something across there to try to get it. So uh, having said all that, I'm in favor of the application, um, but I would leave it open to other people to comment. I agree about the, the view corridor. Um, I agree with Attorney Cronin that um, that this um, this applicant should be responsible for grading away from the existing house, um, and I'm confident that um, that these these conditions are enough for that, and I'm confident that they'll be good neighbors and do that. Uh, the cupolas are are clearly not in our regs and should not be on the house. These three, there is no machinery inside the cupola. It is not a steeple, and this, there is no farming going on. And those are the only three options for cupolas to, to be there, unless, of course, they're including them in the height. In the height, and frankly, um, they are truly at, at the bleeding edge of the elevation that's appropriate based on the calculations that they do from from the foundation out in each direction. And so obviously, and you know, they, they want the real roof there at that maximum height, obviously. And I understand that it's not only turning into a wealthy area, but it's that this house sort of fits with the surrounding houses in terms of its, um, its elevation overall. But the, um, the fact that the house next door might have a cupola or something like it, uh, which, you know, it seems to have something sort of like that, uh, doesn't mean that the fact that we've discovered that in our regs, I mean, we, we can't, um, consistency is a bad argument for us allowing these cupolas. If I lose my keys every day for a week, I don't have to hide them from myself forever. The fact that we don't, the fact that we don't, <laughs> the fact that we may not have always properly enforced our code in all of human history does not mean that we have to not enforce it now. Any other input? Um, just a point of clarification, uh, Ray. When we, I mean, I ultimately agree that in terms of view lanes, that it, it, the house is so far away right. from the road um, that it's probably not a, a big point. I would just um, clarify just um, for, for this commission in, in, in general that the thing we're supposed to be looking at in terms of um, the view standards uh, are views of the coastal resources, not just water. Yeah. So that can include shoreline, rocky bluffs, things. So when we stood there and said, am I seeing water, am I not seeing water, you're definitely seeing coastal resources. I think this particular site is one that is not one to right. have a big problem with, but again, it's not <coughs> literally do I no, see water, you're, you're right. high tide, low tide, I'm not sure. Right. It's, am the I seeing coastline, am I seeing um, rocky true. shorefront, Good. Uh, tidal wetlands and things like that. So that's my point of, of clarification. Um, I uh, agree uh, that Walter is, is accurate. You know, when I, you know, at the bottom of the motion, you have to say I, uh, you know, this is in uh, conformance with our, our zoning regulations and a comprehensive plan and uh, very clearly uh, in terms of the exceptions for heights, um, cupolas are not among them. Chimneys, water towers, structures, housing, elevator, heating, ventilation, equipment, this isn't among them. Um, and I, I note that uh, Reggie from, where is Ubud? Ubud. Ubud. Would you, would you, re would you read uh, Reggie's memo or her email to me? I can if you want me to. Yes, and, and mine to her just to refresh my memory. Sure. Uh, well, <laughs> from March 7th, she says hello from beautiful downtown Ubud, which sounds like she. Indonesia. Sounds, Bali. sounds lovely. Uh, the regulations 273 31 exempt a number of things, and like Bill McVoy, he's her former at zoning, zoning enforcement response. officer. I have allowed cupolas so long as they are. A decorative <coughs> element and not so big as to be a room that can be counted as floor area. I do not recall ever speaking to or telling Camp's architect cupolas are exempt regardless of their purpose 
I hope this helps. I thought part of the testimony we heard was that they had been in intimate conversation with Reggie about the cupolas, and it sounds like she's saying, I don't remember having those conversations. I think the testimony is not the architect, but uh, perhaps Mr. Goss spoke to Reggie. Ooh, okay. I think but, but you said the architect said you interpreted cupolas are mm -hmm. exempt. What you meant to say was the engineer? Not me. Well, your, what I your said? email says okay. the architect said you interpreted them. Okay. I, I, I misspoke. I, the, what I heard at our hearing was that Dirk Goss said that he had spoken to her. I thought. I, I remember Dirk Goss making that statement. Yes. She's saying, I don't Sorry. remember speaking to the architect. He's, right. It's not I, the architect. I'm not interpreting that to then mean she remembers. She didn't say, I, but yes, I spoke to the engineer. So. She's on vacation. She can't be bothered. I understand that. <laughs> um, I, I, I have a hard time finding an exemption for coupons if it's not in our regulations. The, you know, again, the concern I have is that it seems unfair to me if this is how this has been enforced through two ZEOs, that length of time to just change the rules. Now, I agree that I think the right way to do that is to go back and change the code to make it clear that that is not a valid exception. But the code says that. But that's not how it's been interpreted. Well, so what do we do? To, well, that my feeling is... Change the code to say what? <laughs> to Sounds like make it clear time. that those are to be counted in the height. Cupolas and... Oh, make them an exception. That's right. Well, no, they, oh, and okay. make it clear that they are counted towards the height and have to conform to the height. That's well, the plain language currently is that everything would be counted towards. I agree with you. I absolutely. If I was to take a first Reasonable. look at that, I would say you're you're 100 percent right that this isn't an appropriate thing. The only thing I'm saying here is that this has been interpreted, according to Reggie, by two zoning enforcement officers, and was allowed. So to change it without, you know, okay, so changing the code to make it more explicit. Let's say that's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it true. does yeah. seem so, true. Yeah. So let's say, you know, we're, we're saying a cupola is to scale of some sort of scale. But supposing they wanted to put a 200-foot cupola on top. Are we going to say, all right, it's a cupola. So 200 feet is fine. Is there, there's no, the, could well, it that's, be anything? That's the problem when you don't follow the code more explicitly. Right. But all I'm saying <laughs> is that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it hasn't been enforced. And this is the first guy who's going to have it done to him or her without notice. All right, so, so David, you have hmm. the drawing, right? Yep. I'm and trying, that's I'm in the record. Trying, I trying can ask you a question about it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So if that drawing is in the record, They've what is the right size of the cupola right. above the limit of the line? In other words, like say they're allowed to be 40 feet. How um, much higher is this One cupola? is eight. Uh, yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah. please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There, there are two, there are two <coughs> cupolas um, that we view. Um, you know, if and it, if they it's do two not, feet, that's, you know. As Reggie described, they, they, they don't add to the floor area, per se, correct? I mean, they're just that's, sticking that's up. That's the, although it's not in the zoning code, that appears to be oh, the criteria she right. uses to approve or disapprove of these guys. Here and here. That's a big, that looks big. That looks... Well, they're both... I mean, they're big, like but I guess it's more the height. This right. is side elevation. Turn it so we can see it. Oh, yeah. Now I'm going to allow this because it's not new information that we're bringing into yeah, the record yeah. after the hearing. That's correct. We're just it's going over drawn. to. Right. Okay, so please go ahead. The two cupolas that we're talking about sit here and the project east for the, um, the street side of the home and then the water side of the home. Um, as, as we said, there's absolutely no additional. Area. Right, but how high, how high above the roof line do they extend? Um, this one's about eight feet. That one's about ten feet. And how, if you take you know the average height and you average it out and you set your line up to the limit, how far above that limit are they? Um, each one. This. <coughs> I would have to say somewhere, somewhere between seven and eight for this group level. Nine and ten. Okay, so he's nine or ten over at the most, seven and eight at the other one. And you're right at the legal limit with the roof line where it is right now. You're right. right to the limit. We're going to be down below that. You're going to like be down it, below. By about a foot. You know, 80, eighty-two is. Uh, so if you were to if you were to average 
the height of this cupola is into the height of the whole structure, would it bring it up over the one? That's a good question. I've, I've never done that equation. You know, what, what the zoning regs do say is that the cupolas are any, you know, if the cupolas fall within that, that section, they couldn't be more than 25% of the total roof area. And we're well, well, well below. Where's that? 25%. It's in that section. It's in that section. You know, it doesn't talk about oh, height. Yeah. It talks about area footprint, mm -hmm. I guess. And, and, and the Talking justification the you had of calling as a, a mechanical is that they have some sort of light tubes in them that bring light into the house and that'll oh, lower the... Right. They're and that would technically lower the energy usage because it's bringing light into the house during the day. Yes. So that's the justification. For and that there are also comparable windows that will allow ventilation and less energy used for uh, HVAC. So, so technically, they could be considered a mechanical... Mm -hmm. Except for the lack of mechanics. Well, well, that's, well I think that's <laughs> stretching it. I mean, to me, <laughs> to me, a light tube would be mechanical. Is that a third floor, or is it just simply open to the? No, it's just open. There's, there's, there's no like usable giant underneath it, and actually, there are remote operators to open the windows in order to get. Uh, I mean, to me, this is clearly non-conforming to the code. The only point I'm making is that this has been interpreted for mm -hmm. quite some time not to to be included in the height or is it an exception to it because of the fact that there's it's not livable space right but that's eight feet that's right. not a little bit that's a well I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you all I'm you know my whether it's eight feet or 20 feet or 30 feet I mean I, I bet you if it was 50 feet Reggie might have a problem but my the point is that this is how it's been interpreted, and to me, the appropriate way to fix this is to go back and change the code to make it clear that it cannot be interpreted in a way that al allows this, because this is how it's, it's been interpreted. I don't agree with the interpretation, but I just think it's unfair to change the rules on an applicant without notice if this is what he was told, and if this is the practice that's been in place for God knows how long. I think if there's a concern about this, we ought to amend this to make it clear that these things do count in height. But Reggie's email, granted she's on vacation, says I don't recall having this discussion, so it's not. Well, she, but she does say whether she recall, uh, uh, what I'm wondering is, it, I, I wish she was here, because is it what she doesn't recall talking about this particular thing, but she doesn't say she didn't have the conversation, it's just that particular point. She said she didn't have a conversation with the architect. We did have testimony from the hearing that she spoke to the engineer's office. Right. So but it's in response to your email that said the architect said. Yeah, I said the architect. I misspoke. Right. 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 Uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm back to Reggie, but she actually said, well, I, you, you said the architect, so I'm not going to mention that I spoke to the engineer. Or would she say? Oh, no, I don't think yeah. that that's well, really I, relevant. I think I, the point is the point well, is I, that we've always interpreted it this way. Going back to Bill McAvoy, which is like 30 years ago, we've always exempted cupolas, any kind of reasonable cupola, from height requirement. And, and I think <coughs> it, we may want that's to send this back to the zoning committee to clarify exactly what we mean here. That you know, I think the code is very clear about what we mean. I, I don't. I don't. The plain language the and the reasonable you know, interpretation are. Not, I don't there. disagree with you, but I'm just saying the fact that it was interpreted this way for 30 years. If, if it came to me and I was the zoning enforcement officer, first impression, I'd say verboten. No, this isn't right. However, 30 years it's been interpreted but, this way. Right. It's not coming. The zoning enforcement officer is coming to this commission. This commission is only authorized to do what our code tells us we can do. You know, in order to give Reggie a chance at this and to not um, burden them anymore, so they can so they can start and and do more than ninety more than ninety eight percent of the project. Now, I think that maybe we should deny the cupolas without prejudice this evening and. Um, but and if they're denied without prejudice, then they can just come back and ask for the exact same thing with, with Reggie here and or with a variance but, and but or with something else. It's not going to help with Reggie here. You're already saying no, that yeah. she's interpreting it well, incorrectly. Thing, I mean, no, it might I mean it's sort of right. It's not going to help. They say the, the regulations say ventilation equipment. I mean, that'd be fairly easy to put ventilation. If, if 
it to put a ventilation equipment in these cupolas? You put a fan like in a the fan? window. You know? <laughs> would that, would, well, that would, that would you even need that? that if the window opens and they set that, that the window opens? Is that equipment? The does it say ventilation, open. comma, equipment? Or does it say ventilation, equipment? I can't remember. Chimneys, water towers, or structures housing the elevator, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, or other chemical mechanical equipment located on a roof of a building and not occupying more than 25%. So your mechanicals have to be op located on the roof. So ventilation equipment? That means like an HVAC unit sitting on the deck of the roof. The fan is not ventilation equipment? Is it sitting on the roof? Well, it could be attached it's sitting in, in there the somewhere. cupola. That's the same yeah. thing. I mean, on the cupola is on the roof. I'm in favor of 99% of this project, so I don't really want to hold them up anymore. The, my concerns about the view corridors were by far the biggest thing, that the elevation, the elevation as compared to the elevation of the ground um, seems to be at, at exactly the edge of acceptable within a couple of inches, and so I'm, I'm in favor of everything else that we're looking at, and I would like to approve the rest of it tonight. Uh, if in fact, um, um, I think that if we do, you know, if we do deny these cupolas without prejudice, then, you know, if they really are serious about it and come up with, with a solution for us, they can come back. Well, also, can they just ask for a variance on them? Right, or whatever else. And, and what's that process? They're going to come back here and CBA will come to us with a variance. And then we'll amend the site plan. And how do, how do they make their decisions? What part of the hardship? Legal hardship. So they wouldn't have to legal go back hardship. There and make it up. So legal hardship to have. A In this case, they would say that it's too dark or it's not ventilated enough. Well, I, I think likely. they'd have to say Probably something unique about this sure lot that, with better things that well, prevents yeah. them from putting <laughs> the cupolas on without going up to that height. And I, I know that the ZBAs. I'm not referring just to ours, but in general, don't always hold people to legal hardship. But nonetheless, it is another hoop they have to go through, which they may not get. You know, again, I... Well, you know, th there's no, no clear path that, that's going to be good for everybody. But for me, the one path that seems to, to be the fairest for everybody would be to say no to the cupolas today. And if you think you can get past that, go ahead. But um, I, I, I would have a hard time stretching them into mechanicals, even with the window opening. And I'm, and I'm marking on a curve. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and they're eight feet high. You know, they're not. Uh, th th these regulations yeah, appear to be written to say, okay, if you're going to have a heating and ventilating and air conditioning unit that's eight feet by four feet by six feet, then you can go six feet up because there's a unit there. That's not what that is. That's a, a structure <coughs> that is meant to be pleasing to the mm -hmm. eye. And so, what would be more pleasing, bigger. having a cupola or having a, a giant train unit on top? <coughs> well, yeah. neither would be neither. great. Um, it's if it's that there. high up, but that's not what they're saying. It, it, this is, I, I would say, I would say I would piss everything but the cupolas and let them go back and ask for that, making some sort of rationalization of how that makes sense. But it doesn't make sense now to me. Well, I mean, I just and even if it was, everyone said yes all the way down the line. At some point, you have to say, well, this is what the regulations say. Yes, we've been saying this all along. Reggie doesn't have a recollection. At least from what I'm getting from that email, she's not saying, "Oh, I recollect saying that." Oh, she's not saying, "I don't recollect that." She has no recollection whatsoever. And for us to say yes to it based on the fact that she can't remember. No, no. I think that this is the point. I think what she's saying is she can't recall speaking with the applicant, but she did make it very clear that these she things have been acceptable. The architect or architect or whomever. But the point is, she said that this is acceptable, I remember. <laughs> and this has been the case for two zoning enforcement officers is this is how it's been interpreted. That's the key point. And that gets back to what I originally said, which is where is that line drawn if they wanted a 200 foot high cupola? Could you say? Well, oh, I, 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 I them. She presumably don't think they should that. get this. If, if Reggie hadn't <coughs> ever interpreted that, I'd agree with everybody here. I present that this is not something that should even be considered. But I just throw it out there that it seems a little unfair to me to change the rules. I, I hear what you're saying, but weighing everything in my hands, I'm right. still yeah. winning. No, then you should you should vote that way. Which reminds me, I think we probably discussed this yeah. as much as we can, and it sounds like we're in agreement with everything but the cupola, so. So uh, the motion is as drafted? Mm. The motion is as drafted without um, any kind of Okay. Okay, so let's see what happens. Uh, all in favor? 
All opposed. Okay, so we have a tie. Tie, I believe, goes to the. Uh, I mean, motion fails. Motion fails. Okay, okay. it's got to pass. So let's let's try to submit a new motion then that might gain support. I'll ask okay. you to submit one um, again. Right. That was Bauer, Cost, and DeAndrea against. Right. No, four. 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 Thank you. Four. Um. All right, I'm going to read the whole thing again. You don't have to read the whole motion. Again. Okay. As, right, as add what you previously want. stated uh, with the following okay. modification. Voted as previously stated with an additional um, condition. Condition number three, um, cupolas are the, um, the two cupolas as shown on maps. A107 are um, denied without prejudice. Okay, do I hear a second? Second. Okay, in the interest of moving this along, since we've already discussed it, I'll call yeah. for a vote. All in favor of that motion? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Well, what are you opposed to? The Cubans. Oh. All right, he so wants to go he wants to <laughs> that motion <laughs> passed. Uh, yeah, I just did. I mean, you should do 99% of it. Yeah. yeah. You, you're not going to start putting a roof on and then going to cut it out. Yeah, but usually I know. Yeah. All right. So you're denied forward. without prejudice, so you can come back with another plan. You don't have to wait. Well, it's approved. Months. Right, so for that piece. Without, if you want to modify approved, them, make them the shorter or whatever. All right. Well, they could go to the ZBA, right? Yeah, um, you try to get it there. They could. It's up to them. Their call. All right, moving on to the next item. Come back in. We have the amendments. Let's take the uh, accessory building amendment first. So if we can get a motion with regard to 273.2, 273.19, and 273.36a. Um, I move that the zoning amendment, uh, the zoning code in connection with section 273.2, 273.19a, 273.19b, 273.19b, subsection 8, 273.19b subsection 11 and 273.36a um, that the zoning could be amended as set forth in the uh, <coughs> application as submitted to this commission. Second. Uh, uh, finding that it conforms with the zoning code or at least it will. Okay. Second. Okay. Discussion. Okay. With the plan of conservation and development. And the plan of conservation and development. Do I need to add that in? And they're well, effective March 20th. Yes. And they're effective March 28th. All of those things I meant to say. And you re-second. I re-second. Okay. Uh, I think this does give us, the I, I understand what Eric's saying, but I think this does give us the flexibility. Oh, a little bit more clarity. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it provides clarity. There will always be tough calls, and what Eric's showing is a potential tough call, but I think it eliminates the de facto de minimis little Mickey Mouse. I put some duct tape and called it a, an attached structure. So I think it's a good way of handling it, unless somebody... Like I said, unless somebody thought of a really good example of how this is not working, I think it's a, a good way right. of I mean, I think under handling the situation. I didn't think there was ambiguity, but... Well, I think under Eric's we example, I would have but that's voted to approve that one anyways, that he yeah, showed yeah, as yeah, the example. We can example. interpret it the way we want. All right. Um, any other discussion? Hearing that, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? All right. Let's move yeah, along so. to uh, another motion for 273-109. Okay. Um, oh, no, you don't have it? I don't have it. I did. No, it should be in the back there. I didn't see it. That's the same motion. Right there. That's not, that's not the motion. That's it. Oh, that's not the motion. It's voted that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve the following amendments to the zoning code. Um, number three, amend section 273-109 as stated. These reason. amendments. These amendments are approved based upon a finding that they are consistent with the plan of conservation and development. The amendments are effective on March 28, 2014. Okay. Uh, discussion. Second. Second. Good. Discussion. Well, I, I'm not going to vote for approval of this because we already have a remedy for this. If a meeting is going on and there are enough people that have interest in the, in the issue, they certainly can. Uh, we certainly can extend, already extend the public hearing to a second meeting. This, you could have somebody show up and you could have a, 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 a map change or a text and have nobody show up 
without any discussion whatsoever, and but we're going to carry it on to another meeting where there's going to be another another time when we're going to say there's no discussion, there's no there's no discussion about it. If there's if that there's an issue with it, people will be here, and they'll and and we'll uh, we'll we will uh, carry it forward to I another meeting. I think that there certainly has been recent issues. Um, regarding this and I can see the need for there to be some improvements to the process that we currently have um, you know for example if you if there's a situation where there's a zone cha you know you have a small boutique store and then we change the zone to uh, you know have it be industrial right next door to it they might not understand what's happening first go around I'm not, uh, so I, I don't necessarily know if what we have protects a lot of the small businesses in the town, but I do respect what the economic um, uh, development committee proposed, and I'm wondering if maybe we should wait until um, we, you know, if it's on their agenda currently for us to sort of um, address that. Yeah. But uh, there is a motion, I guess, okay. in our current. Well, my, my feeling uh, is we ought to continue this. I think everybody's heart's in the right place, be, be it the, the Chamber or the EDC and GPA and, and us. I think we all are after the same thing, which is to give, make sure that there is notice given to the people who are going to be impacted by zoning change. First of all, this is only applicable to the map and to the zoning changes themselves. Limits it somewhat, but still, it, the, the intent here is to make sure people who are going to be impacted by this have notice of what it is that's occurring, and that if they wish to speak for or against it, they have sufficient time to be able to either hire experts, attorneys, or formulate uh, a statement that they want to make. So I think we're all moving in that direction. I think the, just the question is: is this the most efficient and most appropriate way of implementing that? Um, I. You know, we struggled with this. Uh, I don't know if there is, is 100% a good way to do this, but I would not feel uh, a problem if we continue this to the next meeting. And if EDC or someone else in the public can come up with a better way, I'm willing to entertain that. If, if they can't, and this turns out to be the best way to move forward, I'm in favor of it as well. I, I don't know if I agree with that. Okay. Um, we have had ample opportunity, years and years and years, <laughs> for people to do that, and it has not <coughs> happened. And I have only been here a short time, and I can see how people were noticed, but were not noticed. And you know, we have to rise to a higher, uh, a higher level. We're supposed to set a tone of being absolutely fair at all times. And if we have to err on the side of carrying something over to a second meeting, even if there's some added expense, if that's what we have to do to make the public have absolute total faith in what we're doing and that we're going to let them know what's going on and we're going to have their input, that's, the, the, that's what we serve. We, we serve those people. And I agree 110% with what you say. I'm just not sure this is the best way to do it. That's all. And if we, someone has a better way of doing it, well, great. Yeah, I'm not sure you're going to agree 110%. <laughs> say what you just said after that. Um, uh, I, I very much hear uh, Rich's comments, and, and I and I will go ahead and say I agree 110 and a half percent with them. Um, I think on a, I mean I think this is ultimately a a, a bureaucratic response to uh, a situation, but at the same time I think this commission's reputation has been uh, significantly wounded by certain. Uh, manipulations of this commission where this commission did not stand up and say, you know, this is a, a decision of import. This ought to be uh, brought in front of the, uh, brought to the attention of the full public. Uh, I think uh, applicants attempted to manipulate the system and, and this commission didn't rise to the occasion and say, you know what, this is something that warrants full public participation. I think it's a bureaucratic response, but having said that, it's a bureaucratic response that will ensure that the public has additional opportunity to be involved. I think public participation is what this commission ought to be about. Uh, I think this commission does better when it is informed because we all sit here and we live wherever we live and maybe we don't think about 
that particular neighborhood or that particular, maybe there's a school bus route. I wouldn't have known that. <coughs> but if the public comes and tells us about it, and this amendment will ensure that the public participation has ample opportunity to come in, I think that's a good thing. Uh, I strongly support it. I haven't figured out how to address the irony of the fact that people are saying we need additional time to think about this amendment <laughs> because what we're proposing is additional time to think about an amendment. Anybody who thinks we need more time <laughs> ought to right now be voting in favor of it because <laughs> it proves the point. The, um, I, I mean, I disagree with that piece. I, again, our, our hearts are in the right place. We all want to accomplish the same goal. I just wonder if we should give the opportunity to people who may be able to come up with a better way, which they may not be able to. Well, so we ultimately may implement this, but I just want to make sure that it's fair to the public, it's fair to the applicants, and that it accomplishes the goal in the most efficient way. That's my only concern. How could going overboard notifying the public be anything but fair? Because there may be a better way to do it than this. That gets even but more we, people notified. We, we've, Holding it over <coughs> we've, had, we've had decades of that opportunity, and it hasn't happened. It really only became clear this last time to me that this was that and all it was once yeah. for me well, that's true and that's why we're trying to address it now I'm just saying is this the best way to David do it? can't that's the all. same sort of be said about what you said regarding um, those who are in favor of this motion and in favor of a continuance of time should also be in favor of this motion currently but can't the same you said those who are in favor of a continuance in time <laughs> did, you, did you catch the irony part yeah no i didn't okay. catch the irony okay. i just <laughs> wanted to make sure that we're on the same page that <laughs> well, basically said that you was certain well when speaking ironically ray could you perhaps recite the procedural <laughs> steps that were involved in this application coming before us did it not go in front of the zoning committee and was the zoning committee not a publicly uh, accessible meeting in which people who had concerns could not the EDC have come to the zoning committee to express their they, concerns? They could have. Okay. But why didn't they? Okay. Oh, well, they don't have to. They're not obligated to. They came to I, this. I, I just question whether just is, the, is the motivation here to improve or is the motivation here to attempt to derail the change? Um, You'll have to well, ask the people who are proposing it. I mean, if you think that EDC is trying to derail this. What do you say? So you trying to derail it, or uh, what do you think? <laughs> what, what do you think is on, in the possible list of things? I mean, off the top of your head, what do you think? Three, I mean, like, postpone it for three meetings, postpone it for two meetings? What? One meeting. Just one meeting. Well, that's what we've got, right? That's what I he said, is I would continue it to the next meeting and give these people... No, no, I'm asking what he yeah. thinks would be the amend, you know, how he would improve upon the application. This I, is a... I think um, he already said he doesn't know at this point. That's why he wants to meet with his commission, and, and there may not be a way. I mean, I'm, if, if no one comes back with something, I'm perfectly willing to implement Steve, this. Is this letter from basically your entire commission, or is this letter just from you? Is, has no, it's on, no, it's based on our meeting this month. Okay. And how long ago did you write this letter? A few days ago. A few days. And in that few days, have you come up with any ideas? I have, I have not. And we didn't have time at the commission to really go into that more. Well, I was I concerned. An answer to why we didn't um, go to the zoning committees, because I didn't know it was, on the, it, was a, it was under consideration until somebody on the commission, this commission pointed it out to me. Hmm. The, um, I was concerned. I reviewed the EDC minutes, and they um, there were several pages long. They had a single sentence about this particular um, <coughs> amendment, and the the sentence said that every commissioner was against it. Um, it didn't mention um, any interest in coming back and um, coming up with a more appropriate way to um, to address the concerns of the public. And frankly, that we can. Certainly, if it turns out that this particular requirement is not working, or if it turns out that this particular requirement um, can be superseded by some other item that works better, we can sort of revisit it. Then we can just revisit it. Um, we've been on this for for a while, ever since a couple of unfortunate events, and. Um, 
I, I think that this is the strongest option that we have on the table right now, and I think it would be best um, if we started work on actually um, providing openness, because a lot of the reasons that, um, all of the reasons that have been presented against this possible change um, could also be presented by every single applicant under every single set of conditions. They can always say two weeks is too long, um, another meeting is too much expense. And then they can create pressure on this commission to approve immediately, which has definitely occurred a number of times. And so I think that um, the strongest choice for this commission for renewing its, uh, its reputation in this town would be to approve this tonight. And then if the EDC does manage to come up with um, a solution that burdens applicants less and still protects small businesses and the environment and our historical heritage and particularly residents who make up more than 90% of this town, then I think that we should consider it at that time. Uh, again, I don't think two weeks is too much to wait to see if someone can come up with a better solution than what we have proposed here. We've held a lot of applications well, up for two weeks. I, I just want to say also that, that um, we're, we're, somehow we, we've jumped to being uh, the bad guys. The commission has jumped to being a bad guy uh, the procedure that the commission has been following, being following, it's been been used for ages in this town, and all of a sudden we're not being open. I don't understand. I, the, to make that assumption is, I think, you uh, know, is not is not fair to the commission. We we do what is required by law. We have always done what's required by law. All these documents are always on are always available at the town hall, and. Uh, it, it seems to me that there, there ought to be some recognition that if, if people are interested in this, they ought to be interested in it. Can I address that? Sure. Again, I'm, I'm probably the least educated out of all of you, and I know the least about this. But I can think of an instance real recently, real, 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 real recently, <laughs> where the notice was put in the paper and it was structured in such a way that you had to have a zoning map in front of you. You had to be able to decipher what it said. And frankly, we're supposed to say, understand clearly what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. And we need to make it absolutely clear. Yes, we met the legal requirements. We, or the applicant met the legal requirements. Did it convey adequately to the people that were affected that which was being judged? No, it did not. I sat in a room with all of you. My very first meeting, it was a gigantic room. We were expecting a huge crowd. Three people showed up because they didn't understand the notice. That one thing says to me, I have a higher calling here. If three, people, if three people showed up, then it's not working. And you know, you can say, oh, let's go and revisit this. Let's talk about other strategies. We've had years, years. I'm here six weeks, eight weeks. What happened before I was here? Why, why were better strategies put into place before this? The time is now. The time well, has, it, has it happened before that time? I don't know. I wasn't no, aware. Not that I'm aware. I'm not aware. Well, I was here. But, yeah, but that's that's, fun. It, well, perception it actually, is reality, and I and I do agree that what happened there, uh, it, you know, it would have taken somebody who really dug into this to try to figure out what property was affected. So that that was not a good outcome. There, that's yes. what we're trying to fix here. And, and what was what were some of the fallout from that? Has it, <laughs> didn't it derail the uh, the Boston and Post Road West Study Committee entirely? I, well, I think it did. <coughs> I think it it yeah. And then if the Zoning <laughs> Committee, when a property owner came and had a specific interest to uh, change to a property, wasn't that also attended by people who expressed concern as to what this commission was doing? I mean, I think the fallout has been tangible and palpable in terms of the fact well, that the public I, is not well, feeling I, that they I can, can trust I us. can go a step further. Sure. I'm on Inland Wetlands. Okay. And so I sat through a meeting of screaming people, oh 125 screaming people, and, then, and, and, and they were upset and they were angry. And I looked in their faces. I saw in their eyes the anger and the resentment and the distrust. I felt it myself. And the fear. And, and whatever it takes to make sure that those people never have to feel that again, 
say yes to this. And if a better plan comes up a month from now, two weeks from now, we can revisit it. But at least say yes to this now. I don't really see, um, I, I don't see um, the presentations that have been discussed with me up to this point since this is not a judicial um, since this is not a judicial determination, this is a legislative determination. Uh, I discussed this and presented it um, several times, including to Steve, and I have not seen anyone present another option. What I've seen people do is say that it would unfairly burden the applicant, um, and their focus was on business applicants at the expense of other businesses, residents, heritage, or the environment. And ultimately, I think that we don't have a moment currently where an individual definitely received the information about the application that they need to decide whether or not they're going to pay attention to it. Right now, we have a public notice and we have... Um, a budding land owners have to be notified. Not for a zone not change. That's the problem. And that, is, that, was, that was the, the problem, problem with this last situation. They we're all rezoned about. one specific parcel, but they did it through a text amendment. So the people next door didn't show up. They showed up at the next meeting and said, I didn't know about this. And it was we just sat there and said, sorry, it's too late. And, they, and I said, would you have shown up if you had known? And they said, yes, but I didn't. And the problem is they didn't because of manipulation of and we've had this rules a lot of times in the past um, actually a couple of other times while I've been a commissioner including with uh, LED billboards um, well, we I actually continue to well, I think we have plenty of people show for that look I'm going to just try to move this along so we have a motion on the table which is to accept the uh, amendment as stated I'm going to call for a vote on it all in favor okay vote anybody vote opposed vote. Okay, okay one against? Vote? I voted for it with the understanding that if, the, if people do come back here, we're going to be serious about adjusting this. I appreciate you that. You got for it? I, I voted for it. Yes, okay. because Fine. I, first I, first I, first first I thought that, I thought that the... Uh, All right, guys, it's over. Let's I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just that, that they didn't get public. I mean, the body <laughs> landowners in this case didn't. The case you're talking about okay. didn't get public. Right. Sure. It's yeah. been voted. It's over. Let's uh, go off the record so you can change the DVD, and then we'll come back with the site plans. And what are you here for? Okay, we're back on the record. Uh, we're going to do site plans now. First one is CBS at 1057 Boston Post Road. Site plan approval with existing CBS space, within the existing CBS space, to create a medical diagnostics mini clinic. Okay, please. Hi, I'm Marlene McGuire. I'm the statewide practice manager for the Genetic Mini Clinic. And I'm here to answer any questions you have with respect to Mini Clinics. All right, so basically what are you planning to do in, first of all, I assume there's nothing changing outside of the CVS, right? It's just in the carrier. To my knowledge, there's nothing changing outside. And, and you're just if there were some sort of stipulations with the town and the zoning board that the planning committee was aware of, they would make whatever changes were necessary, but I don't think any changes are going on outside. Okay, so maybe you can just quickly tell us what you're going to be doing with this new clinic. Guilford Clinic will probably be the 22nd or 23rd clinic we have in the state. Mm -hmm. Basically, we'll have two clinic offices. Uh, we don't usually inhabit the second clinic unless the first clinic gets uh, quite busy. Uh, that doesn't take place right away. So uh, we do acute episodic care. We put clinic clinics inside select CVSs so that it's convenient care. It's staffed by board certified nurse practitioners who can diagnose, treat, and prescribe. Um, a good portion of our population has no uh, PCP, our primary care provider. Uh, we are very much in favor of being an adjunct to the community, so we refer people back to physicians who we have contacted and are taking new patients. 
Uh, there's no prejudice there or no favoritism there. We contacted <coughs> clinicians, uh, from various providers. Uh, we do, you know, your regular bench testing like strep and influenza, as well as we certainly give a lot of vaccines. Uh, the state has certain regulations with respect to the vaccines we can administer, and we are adhere to that. Uh, we're clear approved and we're JCO accredited. Uh, I don't know if any, how many of you know about JCO, but it is the gold standard of clinics and hospitals in terms of safety and patient care. Can I ask what the, uh, is this going to be an office inside CVS? Uh, it a is separate, a separate room? It's usually located back in the pharmacy, although we do not uh, explicitly send people to the CVS pharmacy. They can use any pharmacy they like. We are a we prescribe through e-scripts. So this is just a structure you're building inside the city. That's correct. Can you speak at all to the increase in traffic you generally see regarding people coming in and out? How many do you see generally an increase in people going to CVS because of these mini clinics? They would go there to get the prescription anyway. Um, well, that's, I, just, I just want to know. I just, that's kind of a hard question for me to answer. When we first open up, of course, you know, we need community awareness. So the extra traffic or whatever you want to consider it uh, is not significant. I think that what we've tried to do over time is try to continue the flow. So if somebody comes in and we have a crowd of people who want to be seen, we encourage them to go, go about their shopping wherever in town and we'll notify them when we're, you know, the NP can see them. Well, I just want to know, because you've done this, you have lots of clinics. If you notice uh, in the CVS is where you have these clinics, if you notice that they have uh, a higher sort of traffic in and out of, of this versus the CVSs that don't have clinics. Well, well okay. So my honest answer to that is they, I haven't taken a survey okay, of those things, but I would say I hope we have okay. somewhat of an increased traffic. Clearly, you're going to invest that. It's going to be high volume. Yeah, so it might be it much easier. It might be closer, right? I mean, it's going to be well, it's going to be significant. Well, I don't. I to be honest with you. I don't know the size of your yeah, parking lot in uh, this yeah, yeah. facility. But I'll give you Waterbury for example. You know, we yes, have we see, we opened that about six months ago? Is there some <clears> increase <throat> in traffic there? Sure, there is. I think that you'll find that the vast majority initially of patients come from clients who come to CVS and have been coming to CVS all along, and so then they notice we're there. Yeah. It, just, it just dawned on me, you can presumably go to CVS today and get a flu vaccine. That's true, you can with the uh, pharmacist. Are they going to continue doing that, do you think? Or the is pharmacist, this? yes, they do. Even in the clinics where okay. uh, we exist now, the pharmacists still okay. get vaccines. But this, these will be staffed by nurse practitioners, not doctors, but they Board will be authorized to write prescriptions. So if I go with my poison ivy, I can get a prednisone. If, that, if it's indicated. If it's indicated. Yes. What does that mean? Well, let's say you came to me with poison ivy and it's not terribly significant. Oh, okay. I might steer you away from taking the prednisone and say, okay, I'm going to right. get you a top of that. Right, okay. okay. Hypothetically. Okay. Hypothetically, a nurse practitioner. I, I, I was out in California a couple of years ago when marijuana was sort of, you had to get a prescription for it, and you'd go to the pier and they would write a prescription there and then you'd get marijuana right next door or in the same place. Do we need to think about that with CVS or you don't know? I would say to you absolutely not. Minute Clinic really is a wholly owned subsidiary of CVS and they have some fairly strict guidelines that we try to adhere to because we're in many states and we like to have a standard of care throughout. And currently, the only controlled substances we offer are if you were to come in and have a really bad cold, I might offer you cough syrup of codeine, or if you had a tooth abscess, I might give you Tylenol 3. We don't carry any prescriptions in the clinic <coughs> themselves. They all come directly right. from the pharmacy. So we're not a source of somebody coming in there to like hold this up. Actually, they robbed our uh, Riverside pharmacy and they did not, not the clinic the clinic was off to the side but so you know <laughs> that factor can be anywhere yeah. but no this CDS was actually robbed to the roof I guess what really they came down to the roof 
two decades ago. Really? Well, yeah, that was a long time. Um, okay, are there any other uh, <laughs> relevant <laughs> questions? No, um, no this, uh, I do have one. Um, this is not a layout of, of our actual store. Um, of the, this is an example site. Um, the, the main aspect of this is that it's closer to the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a front and a back entrance on this particular CVS. How is it? I I must admit I have not visited it yet. I will be called to go there when we. Yeah. Gotcha. It's time to look at it. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, no traffic requirement or review, George. Anything like that for something like this? So we're no, technically off since they're replacing retail space with office. The parking requirement is less. Good. Okay. All right. All right. Um, is there any other questions or comments? If not, I'll call for a motion. Voted that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve a change of use for a portion of the CVS store at 11057 Boston Post Road, Map 46, Lot 140, to allow medical diagnostic office space as shown on an application and plans dated 22414. This application is approved with no conditions, and this application is approved based upon a finding that conforms with the zoning code. Okay, second. Great, second. Okay, any discussion? Makes sense. Yeah. All right, all in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, you're all set. Thank you. We do. Oh, that's okay. It was very interesting. Okay, applications to be received. Uh, Guilford Agricultural Society. Uh, revision to special permit granted on May 26, 1989 for events at <coughs> Fairground, Table 4, Line 17. Receive and set a public Second. hearing for April 2nd, 2014. Second. All favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we have a mandatory referral from the uh, Board of Selectmen, it looks like, regarding various school improvement projects. The Board of Selectmen approved the following items at its March 17, 2004 meeting, subject <coughs> to mandatory referral to Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, number one, mandatory frill, $2.3 in improvements to the Adams Middle School, including one replacement of windows, doors, and blinds on the south section. Number two, replacement of lentils above the uh, windows and doors in the 1936 building. And number three, interior renovations to classrooms in the southern section of two science classrooms in the 1936 building and four security upgrades to the main office and front entrance. And in addition, a $1.6 million upgrade for related security improvements and upgrades to the main entrances, ADA accessibility improvements, new cameras, buzzer doors, upgraded glass, and additional lockdown buttons at Calvin Lee, Ilford Lakes, Melissa Jones, in Baldwin Middle School. If I can get a motion to approve the mandatory referral. Voted that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve a mandatory referral for various school improvement projects as described in a letter to the Commission from the Board of Selectmen dated March 17, 2014. This approval is made pursuant to 8-24 of the Connecticut General Statutes and based upon a finding that the projects conform with the plan of conservation and development. Clear a second. Second. Sorry. Any discussion? I don't know why we're doing this, but <laughs> exactly. we have to. Well, no, I, the I, statutes, I, really don't, I, I know the statute. I don't, you well, get involved no. in the legislative process. All in no. favor? Aye. Aye. All right, zoning committee, are there any reports? Uh, really, really a meeting tomorrow? No, planning. Planning. Planning, planning. planning has uh, planning. been planning. reconstituted and is having an organizational meeting tomorrow. I believe it is at five. Hmm. Well, we, got a, uh, we got a list of earlier. Yeah, there should have been a list. Uh, where you meet? Yeah. We're yeah. meeting. All council members are invited. You have guests. Everybody's invited. I think that invite went out to anyone. There's a, a list of people that are on it now. I'm trying to reformulate it and fill it up with members of the public where we can't get members of the commission since we're down so many. We, we got the list maybe two times, two meetings ago. I can't find it. Right well, anyways, George, can you send out the list and yep. just make sure it is tomorrow? Uh, the five uh, town hall in the select, is it in the select list meeting room? And I'm told that. Several people have to leave at <coughs> 6, so the meeting will not last very long. Just an organization and want to kick it off. Right okay, approval of the bill, short publishing. We have a figure, George? How much? No, we didn't get it. Okay, okay so we don't need to approve it. it today, okay, uh, the minutes for the March uh, 5th meeting were distributed. Uh, I'll ask if anybody has any updates or changes to them. Okay, let me ask for a motion then to approve the minutes. Oh, I so moved. So moved. 
Second. Okay. Uh, I abstain because I wasn't at the meeting. All right. Uh, any last opportunity? Any updates, changes, modifications, etc.? Okay, hearing that, I'll call for uh, approval. All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? We're all set. Okay, that's it on the agenda. Call for an adjournment. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Okay, Aye. we're adjourned. <laughs>